It's July 9th through the 8th. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just make a compilation of every time I fucked up the date over the 34 episodes? Oh my god. Games, video 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 games. It's July 8th, 2009. And this, and is, this is Idle Thumbs 30. <laughs> oh, beat me to it. And I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. <laughs> I'm Jake Rodkin. We're Great. Done. Well, we've somehow managed to start this episode against all odds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're here to talk about video games. We love video games. We do. I hate video games. Yeah. It's, it's Nick's turn this week. <laughs> <laughs> Role usually occupied by me, now taken by Nick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you probably love video games the most today. You I guys do. Just launched one. <laughs> I launched a video game, so I love video games. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That does that means I have played zero video games. Actually I've probably played negative video games. <laughs> yeah. I've destroyed uh some copies of games that I own. Oh man. They imploded uh due to just neglect. Right. Yeah. Due to sort of willful neglect and sort of extreme neglect. Yeah I, yeah, I come home and just glare at the games that I own <laughs> until they sort of they shrivel They wither up. in shame? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Nope. I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, yeah. You guys have been playing them, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nick, did you play through Trine? Jake, have you played Trine at all? No. <clears throat> I haven't finished it yet. I'm sort of savoring it. I finished it today. I uh, made sure to finish it before we recorded. Oh. Try and savor it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is actually is honestly good advice for that game. I really actually mm. would recommend not just pulling through that game. Yeah, um, it's absolutely one of the best design games I've played in a long time. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. Solid. I mean, it's it's a great game, and unfortunately, the last level is bullshit. Everybody I talk to with this about this game is, yeah. is saying the same thing. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's the kind of thing where I it honestly genuinely makes me angry at the developers because yeah. i'm just like how can you do this how can you how can you make a game that is so great where the whole time i'm thinking nothing but this is awesome this it just is wouldn't be rewarding would... <laughs> if the end wasn't a huge challenge what you'd just be like what the game's over i didn't even have to try mm. i don't know i mean i kind of wonder if part of it is like that they just <clears throat> it's the zen didn't of feel trying. comfortable like didn't feel comfortable just having the last level just be one more level of the thing they've been doing for yeah, eight levels or however long—I don't know how long that game is. You know, however long make it is. it special, yeah. Right, and it's horrible. It's never a good idea. I mean, the reason your other game levels are so good is because you've been iterating on that design and right. that style of gameplay again and again and again to the point where you've made—you've—it's sharpened to an incredible point, and mm -hmm. then—and then that point is just going through the pants, apparently right. In this game, exactly. It's just all of a sudden, it's—it's it's just like, oh, we've decided that this level is going to be sort of a rolling like timed level where there's an enemy constantly throwing things in your way and if you stop for more than a few seconds you die and that's that sucks because when, when that sort of thing happens you at least in my experience when i end up finally getting through a game like that like through that last level it's so much less of an enjoyable experience yeah, like, yeah. it finally it i beat the last goddamn experience. level of that. right yeah i'm more just doing it out of spite at that point to finish and i you know it bothers me because it really i had that exact experience where after i finished it i genuinely was less excited even about all the rest of the game and that mm. really that's the part that actually makes me angry at the developers because i'm like you guys seriously made one of the most enjoyable game experiences i've had in a long time and you're you basically are guaranteeing that my memory of this game is going to be less positive than it otherwise would have been if you simply had shipped this game without a last level. If this game had just ended out of nowhere, it would have been weird and annoying, but it would not have made me angry at your gameplay, which yeah. is what is most important in a game like this. Well, I think the mistake and, is in thinking that it has to be difficult. Or exactly. More, uh, you know, more difficult. More I mean, difficult, It's that boss right. mentality. Because the game actually gets which, fairly challenging. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, by yeah, the it's end, not anyway. an easy game, it's like, necessarily. But it, with games like that, I often like when the final level of it is just sort of a longer version of what the previous experience was or just has more callbacks to like right. yeah, yeah, remember yeah, yeah. when this was the right, primary right, right. type of gameplay exactly. we're, gonna, we're bringing that back for this part and then the second part so you just sort of sort of like a collage yeah, like a little just, like just, yeah, yeah anything like a that just sort of feels like all right, best now, of now is when you overture. get yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. some people really don't seem to like that but I do just kind of like remember all these things or just, just a clip show. We're going to give you a chance to just sort of 
like use all the skills that you've learned right, and make exactly, it feel like a badass, right. but it's not like a cool obstacle course that puts together everything. Yeah, but it's not yeah. gonna just murder you and make right. you want to die. Well, and it's not yeah. gonna just take a stab in the dark at some totally different gameplay style. I mean, yeah, that's, that's really what worst. does it. I mean, yeah, it's that's too bad. But you know, it's it's terrible, and I it really irritates me. And I and I'm I I really, you know, I think it's important for me to to put that aside for a second and say. You really still need to buy this game if you mm-hmm. haven't yeah, bought it. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, Shrine seems to be super yeah, amazingly if you, awesome. If you yeah. just played this game and just stopped at the second to last level, it would be one of the coolest, most inventive, clever, polished. I do that with games a lot of the time, anyway. So maybe I should <laughs> yeah, just I know, stop. Same here. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I have so many games I've gotten to the last level yeah. and gave, given up because it's stupid. Yeah. Um, I should have done. But I, I was enjoying <laughs> this game so much that I, you know, I didn't want to. I'm like, right. I want to keep. I don't want it to be over. I want to. I hadn't actually it. thought about that, and then I just like. Five games just popped into my mind where right. my save game is literally like the last yeah. one. Even shit like New right. Super Mario yeah. Bros. Like oh, really? 8-4 yeah. or whatever the last one is is where I stopped. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day if I beat God of War just in some random conversation. And I was like, I was like, well, what's the ending? And he was like, well, you hug your family and all this stuff. And I was like, what? You hug your family? <laughs> no, I didn't beat it. I stopped just before the end. I didn't right. yeah. apparently see the family reunion. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Yeah. yeah was it because you, I mean, can you remember why? Uh, yeah, no, I I think I just lost interest or something. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I, but I literally, I, I I know I got you know right down to the end. Yeah, because I mean, for me in trying it, there was definitely it was I I probably hit a wall. I'm sure. I mean, that happens yeah. to me a lot where I'll just I'll lose once, and I've played enough of the game where you know I right. don't feel like I you know am enjoying it to the point where it's worth it. Right, right when to it, keep it going. gets to the, to the point where you're just sort of at the sort of mad fever pitch of like yeah blasting through that shit at the end, and you're just. Just you know, and not right. destroying the game. Right. But it's like I'm fucking good at this, and also I'm at the point where my skills plus what the game is demanding of me is actually starting to become mentally taxing on me. But then, and then when it's like, and fuck you, actually you, <laughs> right. sort of, like, yeah. Oh, well, I'm an adult, so uh, <laughs> right. I think that I've had just enough to go over here actually. and read a book. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah which, is, <laughs> which is too bad. But right, yeah. Well, and at this point, I don't really assume that the ending to the game is going to be worth that pain. No, it never I mean, is. It, it never. It, well, it rarely is. It almost, it almost never, never is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny because I've had that experience so many times. Trine is one of the only examples I can think of of a game where. As a, you know, before I got to the end level, but as I could tell, the game was clearly coming to. I'm sorry, approaching the end. I really genuinely had that feeling where when you're reading a book and, you know, the page, the, the, the part of the book that your right hand holds starts getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Right. If it's a really great book and you're like, oh, my God, this is this is terrible. This is clearly going to be over within like an hour's worth of yeah. reading. And uh, I oh, that sucks. Like you guys surely know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's a very cliche thing, but I mean, yeah. it's real. You know, I mean, you there's yeah. definitely a real thing that can happen. And Trine was one of the only examples I can ever think of playing a game where I genuinely felt that. And I was genuinely it took, in fact, I, I probably played through the first half of the game in like a day, and I, it was like an inverse log curve. It was like the more, the farther I got, the slower my pace was mm. because I really didn't want this game to end. I just, I was enjoying it the, uh, so much. The and, s- smaller Valve downloadable offerings actually made me feel like that. Half Life, right? Half Life Two, yeah. Episode One and Two, and Portal were all were like I can, you could sort of feel the story coming to a head. Right. And yeah. It's just yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Man, and you know it's going to be like, like a year and a half or yeah, two it's like, years. Yeah, this is gone, right. and I'm not getting another one of these for a long <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah, with Portal was like that a lot, where it's just like, oh man, you you break out of the yeah. facility, and it's like, this is great. There's a huge amount of game. Wait, I can feel it whittling down. Right. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Oh. and you know what's funny is that I never feel that way about the really long games, and I think that's not a coincidence. I think yeah. the mm-hmm. fact that they are that they are shorter is why the quality is no, I shouldn't say why is one reason the dens- the density is so much better and the quality is so much better is that they're spending more time refining I think, I think the smaller you also stuff can just, they have you can just there. Just feel the arc of the game more. That's true. Yeah. yeah. When, when you're playing when some like, huge sixty like, hour. Yeah. When there's like a maximum of three or four gameplay sessions, you can remember. Every every step thing along the that's way, happened. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Totally true. When it's like, I remember back, uh, <laughs> yeah, two months ago when I was when a I child <laughs> when I started playing this game. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, no, you're totally correct. But I mean, yeah, I can, I can, I can hold the entire arc to each Half Life episode or portal right. in my mind so much more than the right. entire arc of Half Life or Half Life Two, for right. instance, just to use all the Valve games as examples. And you know, I'll, t- I'll, you know, I'll still, Let's in most see. cases, take that over. A game that I just get bored of forty hours in and stop mm-hmm. playing. I mean, I'd st- I mean, you, I finish such a small percentage of games that I play that being able to have that arc in a game that I think is truly great 
is a very valuable memory and experience for me because I don't have time to do that for every game. And so when I can play through a portal or an episode two and have that whole experience in my mind, it's great. And then, I, and then it's, that's what's so frustrating about trying is it's like, I, I, they've stymied me from, from having that, that full 100%. They snuck in the last level from the 60 hour trying. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's yeah, exactly. It's the, the, the Psychonauts meat circus yeah, of trying. It is. It's, it's basically that. Um, but I do want to say that that everything up till that point in this game is truly great. It's it's people keep describing this game as a puzzle game, or or like a puzzle platformer. I actually wouldn't I wouldn't phrase it that way. I've seen some criticism from people on forums and the like saying, "Well, I don't puzzle game. These puzzles aren't hard." And it's not actually. I don't. I think it's unfair to call it a puzzle game. Not that I think the genre matters. I don't know what genre this is, but it. I don't care. But I do think that that it's not a puzzle game. I mean, it, it, no. the, it, the challenge is yeah. not how do you solve this puzzle. The challenge is what, how do you play this game? I mean, there's so many instances where you can get past an area yeah, you, you, by you, stacking boxes with a wizard, especially once you upgrade his spells and can make multiple boxes and sweet. ramps and like triangle floats and things and like <laughs> floating <laughs> floats. Uh, or you can swing with the uh, with the what's her face's um, the the thief's the thief, yeah. uh, grappling hook, like. Or you can pile shit up with the wizard. Uh, the uh, with the, the wizard, or you can yeah. use the <laughs> right. Or you can eh, use the or wizard, use wizard, or yeah. the wizard. <laughs> you could use the wizard alternatively, but I mean, they're just very there. And and with combat, there are so many options too. I mean, all three characters have ways of taking out enemies. Um, some of them are cumbersome, like the wizard. You can just drop things you make on them, but I sometimes that, that's though. just hilarious. I yeah. mean, sometimes it's great, especially that's, that's when you have stupid, the gold. yeah, yeah. When yeah. you have the platform one, and you can crush like four guys simultaneously, it's just it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and there are so many it's amazing. Good that it's a physics wizard, also. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it basically makes Mr. this game wizard. much more about kind of the using physics to to propel you through the game. Like that's basically what Trine's all about to me. It's a, it's a kinetic game. It's like. To me, yeah, this I wouldn't game call is, Little Big Planet a a, uh, a puzzle game. No, no, in any it's sense. similar I mean, to Little Big Planet in that sense. Yeah. Um, a little more directed, obviously, than Little Big Planet. Yeah. Um, well, in some ways, uh, because you have different characters with different powers, which right. obviously Little Big Planet doesn't have. Um, so you have more choice about what your characters do, but obviously there's no level creation or anything like that. Right, yeah. but I mean the the pre built levels in Little Big Planet are totally just about you will follow the predetermined route exactly. of the developer and not right. How will you get around this obstacle? It's right. like you will get around it by finding the lever that drops. Exactly the, the right. Vine. They're very exactly. They're completely prescripted. It. There, there is in fact only one. This is actually a credit to the developers that there was really only one instance that I can remember in trying. It was actually very early. It happened in the demo portion um, where I felt I should be able to do something based on the physics engine, and the game wanted me to do it the developer's way. That was only one time I felt that. That's so rare in a game like this. In pretty much every other instance, I was always able to approach a sort of physics situation in just a way that made sense, and, in a, and the physics engine would allow for what I wanted to do, which is, mm -hmm. I think, an, a pretty amazing achievement in a, in a genre that isn't usually that has very few, relatively few examples of this kind of gameplay. But I also wanted to compare it to Portal in that I, Portal is more of a puzzle game than this is, but one of the the sort of supreme joys I got out of Portal was purely the kinetic aspect. Was when you get really fluid with with the portal gun and the mechanics, the movement mechanics of the game, it's not just that you're getting enjoyment out of how do I create a portal that allow me to get to that platform and put this button right, down. Yeah, it's the actual it's just, feeling of just like right. whooshing around yeah. exactly. the world. And, and, yeah. and being able to well, place the, the portal so that right as you fall through it, yeah. you shoot through. Yeah. Th that's to me. That's where, what surprised me about this game when I played trying. the demo initially. Yeah, yeah I, I did not expect no, that. I didn't just either. For whatever reason. I mean, you can see it in the trailers, but it doesn't really you don't get home a sense until you, yeah. that's you're what, actually going through it. That kind of gameplay is like that, though. Yeah. When it's really good, you could never get a sense of it just by watching it. I mean, you've got to play it. Yeah. Well, because you assume it's scripted or, or it's been sort of, you know. Right. You assume it's got sort of the, the scripted jump where you jump yeah. the same way every time. Yeah. Or, yeah it, and it's, oh, there's some amazing things you can do in trying it. Really amazing. I mean, you know, I've just had, you, when you start getting really, when you start to get a really strong facility with the controls and the inputs, and I, I played it with a keyboard. So I, you know, specifically, you know, like one, pressing one, two, three for the different, the different characters and, and the, the mouth, aiming the mouse to shoot the, the uh, grappling hook. And that stuff starts to come together in a really incredible way, you know, where you, where you create a platform with the wizard, you, uh, uh, switch to the thief, you shoot up to the plot, you can create a platform at, at one point that allows you to attach a grappling hook to it, shoot the grappling hook, hook up there, swing over like a, a wall of spikes or something, and then on your way down, an enemy spawns 
like on the platform you're jumping onto and then in midair you switch to the warrior mm, and then yeah. execute his downward strike attack so that as you land you you kill the guy like it's just you can link together the most amazing shit in this game in the most split second like instinctual way once you yep. know what you're doing i mean it's just it's an incredible feeling it's one of those games where a lot of the pleasure simply comes from how it feels to just move around its world and command the characters and and having those three characters instantaneously switchable is really cool and i've heard the co-op is fun but part of the enjoyment for me really derives out of me personally having complete control. Yeah, yeah. Switching game modes on the yeah, fly. Yeah. Exactly. It's really amazing. I mean, and the levels are designed brilliantly in that respect. Yeah. I mean, they're they're kind of just just enough freedom to let you do that kind of thing, but not so much that that you're ever really standing around not sure how to how to get any further. Mm -hmm. And it's especially because you have a choice as to which powers you you upgrade in what order based on your experience. Um, you can really end up going different areas. I mean, yeah. you know, you can either start making more platforms with the wizard, start making more boxes. You can, uh, there's a crazy platform you can create that hovers in the air with the wizard later in the game, which I totally thought would break the game. I thought it would just be way too easy to just make that thing wherever you want. And you can use the wizard's levitate spell to drag it around with you on it, which seems like it should be able to just take you anywhere you want at all times. But there's some really clever very natural feeling limitations built in and they just step up the level design to a, a way crazier extreme at that point that is way more complex than anything you've seen right, earlier. Like, oh, you can just... float wherever you want? Fine. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. I was so impressed because I was so, I actually didn't want to have that power because it's like, once the game lets you do that, you're going to take advantage of it. You know what I mean? And I, I wished the game wasn't giving me that ability because it makes it so much easier to get to higher places and things. And then, and then they just really introduce this whole other style of level. And it just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's a it's, great, it's great game. It's always a really enjoyable feeling when something like that shows up and it's like, you can tell the developer has two choices at that point. One, right. to sort of hamper the functionality of that device, or two, to just completely step up their game and make mm -hmm. it awesome. Yeah. I mean, right. where it's like, you know in the meeting where it's like, we want the wizard to be able to spawn a thing where it just floats and he can drag it around. And people are like, oh, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> right. that's going to suck. And then it's like, well, or it could just make us make phase yeah. two of the game that much right. more hardcore. Uh, yeah, and in other it, games, I, that would be like the the last level where it just sort of yeah, goes bonkers, know, or like, you, know, like you know, you get like close, these crazy It's close powers. to the last level in this game, but just yeah, but it's just, fine. I mean, it's, it's like the second or third. To last I'm always level. I'm always so excited, just like not even that exact example, right. or like things only one step away from that, but just in general, when something yeah. shows up in a game, and then you see it, and then it's like, oh man, oh, thank you for ruling. <laughs> right. like, yeah, you, yeah, it's almost like I mean, it's not the same example because you don't because uh, these are you know these didn't change the character of the game as much as this does necessarily but it reminds me very much of escaping from from glados and portal or getting the super gravity gun that's what in i have life too you know where it's but like I, fuck yeah it's yeah. on you know what right. i mean it's like yeah. at those moments it's it's completely changes your perception of the game i don't know if trine is trying a little different it's right well, this more seems like gameplay a, a based it's less of atmospheric a, yeah, yeah it's it's yeah but, but it's of just like yeah, your brain sort of goes boop and rotates thirty degrees, right. sort of how it perceives yeah. what's going on. I love stuff like that so it's much. It's great, and and I I just feel like the the just the underlying core design behind Trine is just so incredibly strong. It's just I really didn't actually expect the game to be this good. I really I thought it was going to be a good sort of fun, you know, third cool. third person platformer. We've thing. definitely it's, talked it up over the last two weeks. I know, so but I'm so glad to play it. I'm yeah. so glad that it actually deserves it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, especially I, well, the demo was 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 scary for me because I liked it so much. I wasn't sure if that amount of you know that quality right. would be carried through right. the whole way. And you know uh, what, but, what was fun? What was cool? One of the best. You know what was, <laughs> you know what was, you know what was a pleasant experience. It's really but fun. you know what was really cool is that the first when I when I got the full game, you know, and I started playing through that. Yeah. One of the coolest moments uh, was actually playing through that demo section again mm. and just fucking tearing ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like being, I was Gross. just like, yeah, because I was, it was actually, a horrible, see, horrible I, moment. No, but. I had the opposite. I, oh, really? I, well, I, I did a really dumb thing where I had the demo I and, did a dumb thing. And, and the full version both on my Steam list. And they both say, like, play Trine. And I clicked on the oh. demo. And so Wait, I. Wait, the Steam, you, you got the non Steam version? No, I did. I got the Steam play version. Play Trine is what it says when you put a. The shortcut. The in. demo was was non Steam or whatever, so it, it it just said play Trine, and then there was I guess there was Trine, and so anyway, I I was playing the demo, and I thought it was the full game, and so I played all the way through the demo, got to the end, <laughs> and it was like nothing, and right. I had to go back, and uh, that, that was, sucks. That, was oh, that sucks. Yes. But yeah. anyway, 
I that's another just thing that I really like about games like that. Like I I played the I'm mean, sure you you also probably played a lot of Mario Galaxy and possibly Sunshine. Right. Yeah. That's uh, not those, not as much of Sunshine. Okay, but yeah. Those games are that same sort of style of sort of kinetic gameplay that you sort of gain an amount of finesse and dexterity with and then when you sort of stumble upon mm, something yeah. that you should have completed four hours earlier in the game and you're just like, <laughs> right, right. you just wreck it. It's yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love video games. <laughs> Sometimes they're really good. I, really I've fun. so ha- I've had like seriously the best two weeks of gaming recently that I've had in a long goddamn time. That's like the opposite of my life. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had two weeks of not sleeping and going yeah. completely insane. Well, you ship the games. So you can play other games now that aren't yours. I might. Yeah, it's a good idea. I can't wait to try it. is like the most joyous experience. I mean, it's just so, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's relatively short. You know what I mean? Like it's oh not going to, it's not intimidating in length. It's not, it's sort of difficult, but it's not at all like a yeah. crazy, you know, brick wall kind of thing where you're ever going to be out of place just in frustration, except for the last level, which is that. Um, but, you know, it's just a great experience. It's one of those times where I, I seriously, it's the cheesiest fucking thing, but I'm sitting there playing this game and I'm like, man, video games are awesome. I mean, it was just, I haven't had that in a while. So here's the question. Yeah. If someone is listening to this podcast and they really don't care about trying, do you think they will, <laughs> do, you think, do you think they'll be frustrated that in iTunes they've gone, good, try and, that's the Far Cry try 2 effect. We're very well trying. familiar with like, this. We're like 20 minutes into this thing and we've only talked about trying. It's All right, pretty, so you pretty, video games are great because of trying. Yeah. Right. Let's just, <laughs> no, the other ones are dumb. Let's just keep sort of mentioning trying. Right, yeah, every like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, just so that if someone is scrubbing through this episode and doesn't want to hear about it, they'll just throw the whole episode out because they'll think we talked about trying the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, have, has anyone been playing anything other than the amazing yeah. Trine? Yeah. yeah. Nick, you've been playing a lot. Of, oh, it's oh my god, it was yeah. hilarious actually. I got home from work today and I and I loaded up some King's Bounty because that's that game has been dominating my fucking life and it's amazing. And uh and anyway, so but you know, I live where we record the podcast, so whatever. And so I'm playing and then and then the little stu- the little like right right corner um steam notification thing pops up and it's like nick brecken has launched civilization 4 and i'm like oh what the what the fuck <laughs> what, you, what are you gonna come over here yeah. at any point you, what the, you gonna load up the fucking life destroying yeah. game now oh, the sorry one that takes 18 hours to fucking play a campaign be there in five minutes yeah it was, it was funny so you want to do you want to use that as a launch point? To it's talk funny. About I was going to talk about uh, Call of Juaras, but uh, but oh, okay. Well, we can get to we can get back to that. <laughs> I want to go back to Civ after the break because I, I. Oh, okay. I, so I, all right. So Call of Juarez. But go yeah, ahead. no, I I I, uh, I played a little bit of that game. I I don't know. I played some of the. Um, I played like ten seconds of it today. <laughs> yeah, I can... watched you play ten seconds <laughs> yeah. of it today. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I uh. I played. I played a little bit of the first game. And I really didn't know what to expect here. Um, yeah, you didn't know what to expect after that or from the first game. Uh, after that, because okay. I, I so wasn't a the huge sequel. fan of yeah, the okay. first game. Sure, it, yeah. it I was, heard it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I a lot of people are really liking this game, but I just I I don't really I don't really see it. It the, I mean, for people who don't know, it's a Western shooter, um, and it starts out in the Civil War. And I hate to be you're like a Confederate soldier, which is really yeah, you're a Confederate soldier, which. It's is interesting until you find out that you're a Confederate soldier asshole who Oh really? Like, well, I mean you're just this guy. It's that, basically that could have a lot of horrible implications. You and you your brother qualify that? Well, you and your brother oh, well, there's there are lines and they're like, ah are yeah, you, kill those Yanks, those bastards. Well, okay, uh, but they're your enemy. That's fine. I mean, are you well, like a plantation owner with well, slaves? Like that would be a little worse than kill the enemy oh, no. who you don't who were fighting like no 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 i i not that i've seen it, it it those are the two opening levels and then you switches into sort of like western mode you know i mean like right. it's just sort of I like that the, you're uh, scandalized by a confederate soldier saying kill those yankees well no yeah. they do it in, <laughs> listen okay here's here's my problem with this game i would imagine that would be what well, look, our, they were all right they're the cane of Lynch, a uh, cane and Lynch of of the like western the, the, the cane, cane of, of Lynch. it's the cane That's, of Lynch. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> anyway, I don't like this game very much, and here's why. <laughs> you really so you really don't think it's good? No, I well look, I I appreciate what they're trying to do. I, yeah. I like I like the idea of Western games. Yeah, um, I'm always very open to historical games, and I right, like right. I like the fact that they're they're you know they said it you know they're doing that Civil War intro. I that sure. appeals to me. Yeah. Um, but at the As end a of the day, sympathizer. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, uh, I know how much you hate the war of northern aggression. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. In the in the first, I don't want to. Maybe in the first five minutes, you know, I'm going along. I, I got my little pistols, and you know, I mean, 
the game does make some interesting choices. I, I like the fact that you move slower, that it's a slower paced shooter that, sure. that, it, you know, they're trying to provide some weight to it, which is what a Western really kind of should feel like. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, there are all these sort of strange, like, uh, modern shooter, uh, mechanics in there that just come out of nowhere. Like, um, combo chains. Yeah. Well, there's a bullet time thing where you, oh. you hit a button and you move the cursor around. <laughs> I love it. I love it when one of us tries to bust out an extreme joke, and the other yeah. person, well, actually, there's bullet time. Like, oh, okay. Well, I wasn't okay. Yeah. Sweet bullet time. <laughs> Wait, did you say that you you move out, you bring out the mouse, and like is this like wanted? Can you like hit bullet time with with curve control? <laughs> an ordinary mouse is transformed into an amazing motion control device with Call of Juarez. Basically, the the way it works is um. You hit, Cyborg. You hit Z, the, the cursor, you know, everything slows down. You, you you sort of have a floaty cursor, and the cursor moves around, and every guy that the cursor touches is then marked. And then when that sort of sequence is over, and everything goes back to full time, it, it just speeds forward, and you shoot, like, ten guys at once, right? No. That's, not, that's not bullet time. That's just, like, well, it's auto-target. It's, like simulating it's sort of like a John Wayne guy. thing where yeah, he comes right. out and... Yeah. yeah. You, get All right. that's, like, you get the Spider-Man movie sort of Spidey sense thing? Of yeah, just, yeah. That's or that's one thing. It's like red. It's fine. Uh, and then and then after that, um, there's a sequence where there are you know all these uh, Union soldiers coming at you, and wouldn't you know it that you know the way you deal with these guys is you jump on a goddamn turret. Now I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. I don't understand. Well, there was this game, and then there was another recent game that had a turret that I was just blown away by how they could wedge a turret into this like historical game, or it was just it made no sense. But this you game does a crank. Yeah, it's oh yeah, it's the it's like the the first version of a Gatling gun. But <laughs> they set this game just in time to allow for a historical turret sequence. Well, technically, they were introduced at the very end of the Civil War, but they were never put in service. They, I mean, I'm really glad that you know this. Well, I looked it up actually. Oh, okay. I mean, I I was you, so offended you, I, by a turret. I, was, might, I mean, this is the kind of information I know for a fact that, that it was that not knowing put you, in service. you might know. You well, might I knew, know I knew it was. I knew it shouldn't have been there. I mean, like yeah. that was not something that you just run across. But okay, so there was one. I was like, all right, you know, all right, maybe that. That was like the prototype sure. that just happened to be there. Yeah. They're like turrets in like the first they're they're like 16 fucking turrets. <laughs> and then and then after that, there was a you find you come across like a cannon, like a goddamn Man. artillery piece, and as you're firing the cannon, you <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yeah, firing the cannon. yeah, I'm probably blowing out the mic. Okay, <laughs> as you're firing the cannon, you <laughs> it recharges like every uh, every two seconds. Like you fight, you can like you can like. Well, the camera pans back, and it's actually a Gatling cannon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. It's it's amazing. There there are, and I'm not one of those people who you know really cares that much about a couple of historical you inaccuracies. You prefer like but the, the four NPCs uh, rearming it for you every time. And stuff? <laughs> Wait, weren't you the guy who complained about? So oh no, you were discussing other people talking about the weird like specifics of yeah. I mean, infantry look, in Empire Total War. And, yeah, yeah. Th there are degrees of of how to of how to take that. Now, right. it, it wouldn't be offensive to me if if I think the alternative would have been more interesting. There are so many goddamn guys shooting at you in this game. It's basically like a Doom game. I mean, there are just like a million soldiers. And so the, the why not make you a super soldier? <laughs> <laughs> so well, you basically are. I mean, you can shoot like 20 like guys. Like the Wolfenstein on the of the Civil War? Yeah, like a, like <laughs> like, a really Mecha like General Lee. Wolfenstein took, uh, like, uh, took World War II and do a crazy yeah, supernatural direction. like a mechanical direction. General so Sherman Civil War. coming yeah. through Atlanta, like riding a steel horse <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> in a tank. Like... <laughs> No, yeah, a steel horse in a tank. Well, yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you thought that was a Come metaphor. That in. <laughs> you uh, haven't seen the concept art for yeah. Call of Duty. You haven't seen the real Civil War. That's how those alternative yeah. reality or alternative steampunk fiction, or whatever, or like his right. history things, are yeah. like you. This is what the real Victorian right, yeah. era, like the real world right. behind the history books, is this crazy <laughs> robot. So. Well, yeah. And there are other things like you, you, they basically sub in um, packs of dynamite as grenades. And so you're you're just chucking like dynamite at people, just yeah. like like, like, like you've the, got like, like six satchels of dynamite, and you're just throwing them out like everywhere. Like the demo man, and other soldiers are throwing trailer. those at you. Yeah. Like they got. So this like, is basically Call of Duty slash Juarez. You yes. You don't remember the yeah. Civil War when people just threw sticks of dynamite at each other? <laughs> 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 Juarez of it, duty. It's like that, uh, but I, I, all right. The, the problem, the the real problem I have with it though, is that there is so many dudes, uh, so many so many enemies, 
and <laughs> there is a total sausage fest. <laughs> what, what I didn't like is there is so many dudes. <laughs> there are all right. <laughs> there be so many dudes in this call. <laughs> hey, I'm enjoying everything you're saying. Okay. <laughs> I'm very passionate about. Yeah, you man, I didn't about, actually uh, totally didn't expect this. Historical accuracy. Before when I was play, when I was playing a few seconds of yeah, Call of War, as Nick was like, I can't hold back from talking about this. I know, but we, before we, the podcast, you were, like, I thought you were was, like, I don't like that voice actor in the prologue. <laughs> oh god, the fucking voice like, acting. I don't like the audio compression. And now you're like, there weren't Gatling guns in the Civil War. Like, whoa, different plane of complaint than I was expecting. Going into this. Well, yeah, that brings me to my other point. The, the voice is the, the 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 voice compression is awful. I mean, it just sounds terrible. I don't understand. What it it sounds just tinny like 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 twenty eight kilobyte you know uh, iPod compression from nineteen ninety nine it's just awful I'm not um, really allowed to join in this conversation <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I, all right but getting beyond that the, the, as far as a, a gameplay decision goes having that many guys having that many enemies. Just doesn't make any sense to me because what I want in a Western shooter. It's also yeah. It's also not what westerns are about. Is exactly now. Once you get to the western part, the first the first western scene starts out with a duel, which I thought was kind of okay, cool. It's, it's cool. sort of like an in, in, interesting yeah. duel mechanic where you keep your hand close to your thing, and then the is it like the, uh, and the like any pixel anti game? The um, you know what I'm talking about? Hmm. No. Want to talk about that for a second? No. Or is it Ananthropy? God, who is it that makes those little in- pixel indie games? And yeah, well, whatever. I I'm fucking this up. <laughs> Continue <laughs> talking. <laughs> It's just like well, that. she made a and Western then... <laughs> game with a quick draw mechanic that's that's yeah. probably similar to this. Okay, well, it, it, it's fine. And then so I do the draw, and and then you know the rest of the town's like, "Oh my god, kill the sheriff, get him!" And they're like, 50 like, I didn't know that guy was the sheriff." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kill the who? <laughs> <laughs> but then there there's like literally an army of guys. Um, just just the whole just, town. It's the literally whole, like the whole town. Like, yeah, the, horde the, the just blue, comes the blues around. brothers of yeah, the western. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are carriages just like careening, like, like flip, yeah. doing flips and piling into each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Call of War. <laughs> and then the, the, you know, before that, there was a scene where you go to your house and you're just going, you're going home to find mom. That's weird. It kind of turns into The Sims, and you can buy furniture. <laughs> I didn't know where it was going with this. But. Um. Anyway, I, Call of War as nightlife. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> weird. But then after that, there's quick draw. This is actually the sequel to Spore. <laughs> <laughs> Will writes Call of War as. <laughs> Which game is it? That's the slogan. <laughs> yeah. Voiced by the Simpsons team. Yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. Oh, geez, Call of Juarez. <laughs> Will Wright's Call of Juarez. Rated RP or whatever. <laughs> RP. I guess this game That's is the not final rated. rating. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the board just couldn't figure it out. Like, we don't fucking know either. <laughs> rated E to AO. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that's Call that's of Juarez. Yeah. That sums yeah, up. I didn't expect that at all. Way to go on. Uh, interesting. They're just yeah. It's it's just you a know big... what what you say actually though does speak to a, a fairly endemic problem to video games, which is that they are pretty much incapable. Well, I shouldn't say incapable. They very rarely address different <laughs> genres in what? <laughs> the second time you've done that. That's the, God, the one thing, or what did you well, say? Well, I don't want to be like, too absolute. No, no, no. Like, I don't, it's a big know. thing, and that's not the that thing that gives a thing. Like, you well, keep, you I just, keep you know, just I wanna, these extreme I want to hedge my, I want to hedge my bets. Someone, I don't, you know. If this way I can, I can claim I, uh, right. I'm never wrong. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, but, uh, you know, it's really difficult, I think, for games to accurately reproduce um, most genres, really, other than action, because as soon as, you know, like a Western game, most of the time, the developers is going to fall back on the same mechanics you used to play on your game with a gun in it. Like a mm-hmm. sci-fi game, you, you're, you're pretty much just going to end up making like well, see, the, the same shooter or the I same know, RPG, yeah. but there's a spaceship in it. Like you, never... There are some things that they try to do. Like there's a cover system in the game and uh, it's sort of, it's an automatic thing. You go up to a, a box and... and uh, the, uh, the cover system it was the thing I was going to throw out as a joke before you said bullet time. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, God. I mean, cover is becoming sort of a cliche. A game it's a cliche. cliche. Um, but it, it does sort of work for for the stuff. I mean, know, it makes a, sense a in a western game. It yeah, makes sense. I mean, yeah, your guy automatically, 
you sort of rock the mouse and he sort of peeks out automatically as you, as that you go work? up and down. It, 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 it's, it, it works most of the time. There are some uh-huh. instances where you slip into it and you didn't really want to. <laughs> Jake is writing down potential episode titles here. <laughs> see if you can figure it out. Rock well, the mouse. You already you know what the read the ones I've got so far? Yeah, sure. Uh, so far we have The Cane of Lynch, This Crazy Robot, and Rock the Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, dear readers, already know which of these was chosen. <laughs> We don't. Yeah. It's like you're in yeah. the future. Anyway, so you rock the mouse. You rock the mouse. <laughs> and uh <laughs> rock the mouse. <laughs> anyway. On Teen Disney. Like yeah. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but that, yeah. I, that's an interesting choice though. I mean, at least it's a different take on cover mechanics. Like I said, there there's some things that are doing with this game that I I appreciate and I think that were smart decisions, but overall I I just I just feel like it's, you know, they they threw those interesting things into a just general bullshit shooter right right and uh it kind of made me sad because there was potential there but uh, yeah it's just that's, it's just so much goddamn shooting that it's that just, describes uh, what i how i kind of my reaction to gun if you guys played that i think i may have talked about this on the podcast yeah, before but it's, I, I haven't played it but i've heard a lot about it it's it was made by neversoft the tony yeah, hawk guys yeah. and it um uh this was back right around when tony hawk was becoming increasingly unbearable and uh uh, it started off with just one of the most promising, awesome introductory sequences I've seen in a game in a long time. I think time. with you and your father or whatever? Yeah, who's yeah. Ca- who's played by Chris Christopherson, who oh, just awesome. did an amazing job. Uh, just cool. with, like, excellent, I mean, as you'd expect, sort of gravel-voiced, you know, old-timer. I mean, he was just amazing. Like, he did an incredible job, and it was, it put me in, and the world looked really nice, and the game had this great w- sort of movie-style opener, which I thought actually worked really well, uh, where you, you're introduced to this the basic setting and premise of the game and your father and this whole world. And then, and then the camera kind of, it's very simplistic. It does a very, it does a nice pan up over the environment. You see this very classic Western setting with hills and a river and uh, like a steamboat, I think in the background. And it's just an, an amazing soundtrack, really great soundtrack that isn't just complete Ennio Morricone ripoff, mm-hmm. uh, like comes up and then the, mm-hmm. the, the main title comes in just stark white text, no like crazy stupid yeah, yeah, logo yeah, treatment. Awesome. I mean, it was just a very elegant opening and I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be a sweet, rad, like Western experience. And then you get into the game and you start shooting guys and it's like combo chain times two. <laughs> like Tony Hawk is yeah. here, like grading you. Like what? Uh, that was one of the things I, I wanted to say about, um, about Call of War is the music is just it, it's generic shooter music like there's no there's like a, a little western flair here and there but it's just is there an electric guitar <laughs> like with distortion no there's no electric there. guitar it's it's kind of like Call of Duty music I guess it's it's got that um, sort of horn heavy gen- very generic I don't want to yeah, I haven't played enough of the game really stuff, yeah. there may be some western that stuff that stuff in there, is, but the, is the scourge of, of game audio at this point it, that, in fact it, that may have been simply for the military levels I don't know you know they, it may get more western right, yeah. so I don't want to judge the game based on that but it, it sort of disappointed me because it was one of those things where it was playing throughout the whole level yeah. and just did not match at all what I was doing you know I mean it right. just it just felt so out of place there was just a lot of a lot of missed opportunities i eh, i don't know yeah kind of like a half-hearted saying. effort about trying <laughs> <laughs> what oh <laughs> just do it we we're talking about trying oh yeah for sure i did like trying yeah so yeah. uh that's all we got to say about trying i think we're gonna take a break yeah yeah we'll come back talk about some trying yeah video game remember that time when you used to write songs yep trying 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 video game we're back. All right. So, uh, try video games. Oh, yeah. Try. Yeah. God. God man, that we couldn't stop game. talking about it during the break. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Said some really interesting things yeah, about try. Yeah, I agree. Trying. Trying, trying, trying. Trying. Yeah. So, Nick, what do you think about Civilization 4 and trying? <laughs> <laughs> well, trying's really good. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Trying. I, yeah. Civ 4 is. Yeah. Know. Speaking of speaking of trying, you were playing some Civilization 4. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, but you, I, I did want to talk about Civ 4 a little bit. Yeah. Um, no, you definitely should. Because uh, that game is pretty much destroyed my life out of nowhere <laughs> which it, it seems to do a every, every couple attack, of months like here, yeah, of, it, yeah. it just comes out of it's just really oh god that game um i really think it's one of the best if not the best game to come out in the last decade i'm i'm increasingly convinced and i hate yeah. to to place games like that but it it i am i am just every time i play it i i i'm just more blown away by it it as a, and I guess when I say best games, I'm talking about you're talking about best ten out of ten no. graphics <laughs> replayability. Wait, hold on, we're getting arrested. I just wanted to toss that in there. A guy wrote us in and said 
whenever he's driving, he always gets really freaked out when the ambulance, ambulance <laughs> noises or police noises come on. And so he appreciates when we joke about it so that he immediately knows he doesn't have to pull over. We were just killed when a thousand cop cars piled on top of us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Civilization yeah. 4. In, and, in a uh, Civil War recreation. Right. Um, in a sort of physics-based platformer where you can uh, choose between three <laughs> controllable characters. Trine, I think, is what you're discussing. Yeah. So anyway, back to Trine. Yeah. So back to the best game ever, Trine. Yeah. Civilization 4. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so continue. So... Um, yeah, no. I when I say game, I, I don't mean uh, video games. I'm talking about. Whoa. I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking, talking about life. No, I'm talking about a game as in like a system. In a very a system, right? A system. Right. As opposed to like a interactive narrative right. per se, right? Yeah, sure. It is just God. <laughs> we're getting hardcore oh, arrested now. Yeah, man. we're. It's, we're up to it's, four stars. It's Blues <laughs> Brothers. They're piling up. <laughs> um, but no, I know what you mean. You basically mean a game where essentially the computer is playing by the same rules yeah. you are. Yeah. Whereas pretty yeah, much any of, yeah. tradition, like a uh, simulation, yeah. uh, I guess. I mean, not always really, but but in this case, it's uh, anyway. We so what I wanted to we say. We sort of know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I think most people know. What you're it's saying. just it's incredibly addictive. Um, but beyond that, I think it's just doing some. It, it just oh, man, it just does some really amazing things. I was playing through it, and um, I sort of got to uh, a point where. Uh, I, I simply could not beat uh, the noble difficulty. People who haven't played it, uh, there are maybe uh, seven or eight difficulty levels, and it, they get insanely difficult very, very quickly. Like, this is a very difficult game. In fact, I don't know, you know, I, it's very easy to see how Civ Rev got made because anybody who plays Civ Four will look at that game and go, holy shit, like, the average person does, would not know what to make of this game. Like, How just, high is Noble on the seven yeah. difficulty it's like, scale? It's funny. It's, it's, it's like four yeah. out of nine, maybe. I, 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 think, I think it's more than seven. <laughs> it's I think, like, it's I think, like 11 out of 217. It's, it's, it's pretty low. It's I, funny. It's, it's, it's actually, yeah. I mean, to put it in context, with the, all of the AI plays at Noble. I mean, it's a handicap system, essentially. Okay. And, and so... It's it's just putting you on par with the AI, and God Almighty, like that is just, I, man, it's just so goddamn frustrating when you're at that level where you can completely demolish everybody at the lower difficulty level, but the one just above that, you get just right. totally fucked. Like you, there's just no way to get past it. But some interesting interesting things happened when I got to that level. Because I realized, wait, that have you crossed that threshold now? I just today, oh man, sort of like this managed going to survive on long I, enough. When you when I inter- messaged you on Steam, is yeah, you were in the midst my, of my my real conquering? solution was 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 to sort of end up on a continent where I, it was just me and uh, this other uh, Civ. Was and, that the Antarctica one? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. Because you were saying yesterday, you were like, "Oh, for fuck's sake, Sid Meier, <laughs> now you've put me on this shitty island." Yeah, yeah. No, I'm never gonna beat this game, and that turned out to be the secret. Sid Meier yes. is smiling down on you. He is. It's it's one of those games where you... you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird that's because it you know there are ways to sort of game Civ where sure. you, you know the you know the game has a seed and it starts everybody out at a certain position and and and. Uh, the AI is going to react a certain way and, you know, you can load games up and, and you, or you can just start a game over and get a better position where you're right. starting on the map, get different maps. But um, it's interesting because the player then has to sort of make a decision to sort of stick with it, even when they know they're screwed. Right. You know, because it, it changes every time and just the difficulty level has no impact on whether that map is going to be advantageous you know, or yeah, advantageous to you. Um, so, yeah, I started out on this, you know, this uh, terrible situation where i was stuck in this like antarctic island at the bottom of it you know like there was you know there were like you could just sort of see in the distance that you know there was like a tropical section to this continent but like right. i was stuck in the you know like right the polar Viking, region yeah, yeah like yeah um but i was only there with with one other guy so my you know the way that i i solved this problem was just basically banding about 20 dudes with clubs like the, the least powerful unit and just sort of uh, march to the, the you city just gates. Beat up a guy with clubs. Yeah, basically, like I. And it, <laughs> yeah, you were saying you had like an army of guys. You just yeah, oh, yeah, fucking. So yeah, it was like you're, you're yeah, like four thousand BC. I was I was just like, <laughs> oh, let's go get him. You know, just like yeah, just, you, you know, were you were uh, Genghis Khan like ahead of your time. Yeah, basically. basically. Yeah. Um, 
Which is sort of like a sad reflection of, of how good I am at Civ. Uh, <laughs> the only way I can win is by just beating a guy it's, with a it's club. It's the equivalent of an SCV rush, you know, yeah, in StarCraft. Yeah. yeah, it's the cheapest thing you can do, but it, it actually worked. And so I well, had that it's kind also, of... you can't really criticize that strategy. I mean, Oh, it's, no, it's you know, totally it's valid. Like, in fact, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised it worked, because typically when I try and do something like that, I it's it's completely... History yeah. will bore this out time and again. <laughs> bore it out? <laughs> we'll bore it out, yeah. yeah. Bore. But I mean, there's certainly, historical, there's certainly historical parallels, you know? I mean, just yeah. the idea of just overwhelming the enemy with inferior yeah. troops is not at all a- and that's why Civ is so brilliant that's why I'm, I'm trying to build to this but but the, the parallels in every in every instance you know if you lose if you win if you're just sort of middling um it's just amazing to look at it and go you know i can see what civilization i am like i can i can make direct comparisons to to uh to historical you know right. events um, maybe, maybe not with fighting battles where a spearman can take down a, <laughs> a, a tank but well that doesn't happen in civ 4 but but right. yeah they they sort of fix that by yeah. civ 4 but yeah yeah i know yeah that's always that's always kind of ridiculous um when when you got like a musket man and right. uh, and you get taken out by a dude with a bow. Yeah, uh, they unfixed that for Civ Rev. It's really funny because Civ Rev was the most recent Civ game that I played a lot of, mm-hmm. and it's hilarious how breakable it is compared yeah. to the the other Civ games, or uh, I guess the more recent ones anyway. Like I mean, I got I I, I remember having a, a difficult time with the highest difficulty level in Civ, and I even posted on my blog about it because I was so frustrated at the time. What you're, but except the difference was, in Civilization Revolution, that was the highest difficulty level, mm. whereas for you, it's like 4 out of 9 on Civ 4, because that's what kind of game that is. But then I remember, you can kind of solve Civ Rev, like, in a way that you can't yeah. solve the other ones as cleanly, to the point where you can just sort of figure out what works and then just sort of do it. And there's kind of a thing that you can exploit with almost any civilization, it, where you like if you're the French, you just go culture crazy, mm-hmm. and you can just start taking over enemy cities like almost instantly if you just put all your shit into that. I mean, it's like the opposite of of Civ Four in a lot of respects. Yeah. Like you you ha- you can just sort of choose one thing and just mm-hmm. go with it to the exclusion of everything else. And if you are successful enough in that category, you can basically just dominate. Civ Four gives you you know sort of like a an extra unit here or a right. you know a right, bonus exactly. there. Yeah. And it, 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 it does sort of make, you know, if you're the Greeks and you've got a phalanx unit, you know, then maybe that's when you want to sure. start your shit, you know, start your wars. But other than that, though, I mean, it's such a complex system, and, and but that's why it's so great. I mean, you never really know what's going to happen, um, right. but, but the, the sort of the revelation I had was that, you know, typically what happens with me at Civ, I, I do sort of get stuck on that lower difficulty level, and I just end up, you know, being, you know, about, you know, 1500 AD, I've got this gigantic empire and I know exactly how I'm going to win. And, you know, it's fun to a point, but then it just becomes an exercise. Right. Of course. Yeah. Um, but in the past, you know, the alternative is, is just, you know, basically being screwed. You know, you're, once you get stuck in the middle of the pack, um, you've got, you know, like a, right. an American empire, uh, 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 equivalent, you know, just sort of taking over all of, you know, research and, and just blowing you away. And it's, it, it doesn't seem as fun, but the revelation I had was that actually, it, it kind of is more interesting and and really fascinating to just sort of stick with it and and not worry about being that top not guy. do the quick load. Well, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, which is what I always did. I always, you know, just fucking cheated as much as I possibly could because <laughs> right. it, it was just so frustrating. So when you're you get, you're actually getting into the sort of weird life simulation aspect of it instead of I just guess it's being yeah, top it's, dog. It's the equivalent of like doing a hardcore mode on a, in a, you know in a, in a shooter or something. You know, just like sort of sticking yeah. with it. Um, There's some guys doing that by the way right I know, now with Far Cry, Cry 2. 2. Yeah, 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 that's that's sort of what I was making reference yeah. to. What sure. is this? It's, there's there's a couple guys. Um, who are uh, <laughs> Far Cry Two back on the game list? <laughs> you thought it was gone. Yeah. Um. There, there. Uh. I think three guys right now who are. It's really cool. They're, um, doing run-throughs of Far Cry Two where they're essentially playing the equivalent of Diablo hardcore mode, where if they die, they're done, and their their game is over. Yeah. Um. There's no obviously built-in support for that in Far Cry Two, but they're just saying the first time I die, that's it. I have to start over or stop playing. Um, and it's really cool. I mean, it, it just introduces, they're, they're tracking on their blogs. I'll put it up on the, now that we're actually for real, um, linking stuff we mentioned. Oh, yeah, the idle thumbs downloadable content thread or whatever. Right, exactly. If you go into our forums, if you go into the episode forum where, where we have all of our per episode posts, there's a separate thread now that uh, is just devoted to, uh, all the stuff that I always say we're going to link and then we don't actually. And if, if I forget something, just tell me in the thread and I'll put it in there. Um, so yeah, I'll link these guys. Um, they're, they're guys who are kind of in the sort of, I don't know. There's this weird small community of people who sort of comment on game design and sort mm-hmm. of comment on each other's posts and 
reply yeah. to each other on Twitter and stuff. It's sort of this weird little group. And actually, Clint who Hawking. Are these who, three guys? Oh God, one of them is uh, we've we one of the guys we met at GDC, Nels. Um, I okay. don't remember all their names unfortunately because I'm horrible okay. with names. But um, yeah, and Clint Hawking is also already kind of in that group anyway, and it's his game, and so it's been an interesting kind of back and forth. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. addressed He's it on his blog too. Stuff, yeah. So that's cool. But anyway, Nick, please continue. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I I guess what I wanted to say mostly was that what makes Civ Four so brilliant is that you get to these you know situations where you're not the top guy, and it and it. You know, it's very easy to sort of, you know, play the game and just sort of, you know, when you're doing diplomatic uh, things and, and just kind of playing it and just not really thinking about, uh, you know, how it applies to to, yeah. to to what it's trying to simulate. I mean, it's, right. it's essentially trying to simulate, you know, a way that, uh, you know, politics and religion and all these things impact. And it's cute in the way that you go, okay, well, you know, the culture impacts the boundaries and things like right. that. How can I leverage this? To, right. To yeah, do, yeah, yeah. But when you actually sit back and think about it, it's it's doing it to a degree that is really impressive. I mean, it's, it's, it actually, you know, when you think about the scenarios that are generated, it, it, it does, it does apply fairly, fairly well to, to historical, you know, uh, uh, precedent. And it, it's just, it's just fascinating. It's like when you are in the middle of that pack and there's a guy, you know, there's a sieve that, that, um, is, is, uh, is basically dominating in research and, and, in resources and all, the interactions that you have, you know, the diplomacy, you know, everything about that is is sort of accurate. He's, you know, completely you're completely subservient to him, and and right. and uh, you're trying to make these deals with other civs, and, right. and you know, I, the way that religion works in there, you know, if 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 you're a civ that is um is Jewish, and uh, and everybody else in the world is 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 a Christian religion. Like last night, I was just sort of minding my own business, and all of a sudden, four civs just declared war on me out of oh, nowhere, man. and I oh, had no God. idea. I was like, "What the fuck? Like, what did I do?" I was just like, was this minding my own business. You posted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. I had no you describe idea. Describe the screenshot and post it in the well, downloadable it's, it's content just, thread. Yeah, it's it's basically just you know, uh, you know, <laughs> so you know, so, you know, you gained forty gold, blah blah blah, and then. So, uh, so and so declare war on you. Uh, you know, Hatash, but uh, declare war on you. Just a list of just like five or six civs that declare war on me all in a row. And then at the very bottom, it and says auto save. Auto save. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's fun. It was hilarious. But it, 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 and then I discovered that it was because I had gone against the grain. I had, I was, you know, just not uh, a, a Christian religion, and so they just. <laughs> they just that's, out of that's religious uh, up and awesome. disdain. They, I mean, that's an interesting thing to emerge out of that system. There are other. Th I mean, there are more subtle things too. You know, just the way that uh, uh, f war fatigue factors in. You know, when you're conducting a war and and, uh -huh. and your cities sort of react to that. Um, and then you know the research and the balance between you know the the resources that you're inputting and the certain you know. Um, there were more than a few times, and I wish I had just written them down because my memory sucks, but. Um, where I, I went, my God, it's just like, you know, this, or it's just like, you know, this is just like, uh, you, you know, the Iraq war, or, you know, I mean, right, right. Not, not such, you know, not in superficial ways, but actually in fairly, um, in sort of uh, ways that ways. speak more to the underlying trends and, yeah. or, or rather, um, not trends, but sort of underlying dynamics. Yeah. 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 It, it's just, it's just a really impressive simulation, like beyond what you, it, it takes a lot of rounds, I think, bef for you before to sort of sort get of past that, trying to beat right. the game and sure, sort of, sure. you, you know, allow you get yourself into it with Civ, to it's so the way a real yeah. civilization actually operates. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but once you do, it, it's just it becomes a, a really, really uh, interesting uh, system. And then, you know, I mean, the soundtrack I think is is probably my yeah, the favorite soundtrack. soundtrack. Is awesome. I agree. My favorite soundtrack awesome. in a game that is not original by far. I mean, it, it yeah, is it is just fantastic. it is really mind blowing how how I mean it's it's what's the soundtrack to Civ Four? Well, I mean, every it, it basically it's pulling just amazing music from every um, era. Oh, era. Yeah. Um, the modern era is all you know john adams kind of very minimalist uh yeah uh, uh classical stuff it's just it's amazing um and that just you get into this mode where you're, you're hearing that music and you, you're you know things are happening and and then at the end of course it shows you that that timeline of, right. of all everything developing right. and, and the graphs and things and it, it really i don't know it's just it's just a fascinating game it's just i i uh i think i i'm just i'm just constantly impressed by it like more more than it, I, do they I guess I guess I, I you know I just sort of assumed that it was just addicting because of uh you know basic 
uh, stupid things like you know I just like winning, but it's it's really <laughs> that's what King's Bounty is. <laughs> I can talk about that. In a you know, minute. you know, but but it, it's 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 addicting for a different reason because it's so interesting because so many different yeah, things it's can genuinely happen. compelling it's, for real reasons yeah, instead of just when yeah, people say compelling and they just yeah. mean I want to play it. And I, I question whether a game like that will ever be made. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask again. Is that, uh, the most recent one, Sivrav, is probably not like that no it's no. not at all like yeah. that. and uh, no. i mean is there going to be the equivalent of a civilization 5 at some point i'm pretty sure there will be civilization 4 was extremely successful for 2k yeah i would i mean i would be shocked if there were not a civilization 5 um and actually i was gonna i was going to say actually i wonder what it will be like i mean that's i think there will be one unquestionably but i wonder i wonder what direction Which, yeah they're gonna go whether in. they'll yeah. streamline some of yeah. these things and i mean i would like to see them just make a sequel to civilization revolution and then make Civ a sequel to civilization 4 i mean yeah, both, of, both of those games yeah. were extremely successful but probably to fairly different audiences right I mean, just spin Civrev off into its own separate yeah because half. Civrev could be honestly like i actually enjoyed that game but i think it could be a much better game i mean mm -hmm. they could make that a much better game without making it like civ 4 they could make that game way better yeah. just by improving certain very breakable design choices and also just honestly some fucking horrible just interface stuff that just mm -hmm. you know from a pure polish perspective if they just did another one they could just make that stuff better um yeah but there's no real point making two of those games at the same time uh, it would be nice to see them actually keep those divergent uh paths yeah i agree i don't know if they will but actually, one thing I wanted that we shouldn't, we've probably talked about this yeah. already more than any other game this podcast, but I'm trying. it's really interesting. I'm glad you talked about it. Um, and inadvertently, you've sort of, in my mind, created a rebuttal to something the Rock Paper Shotgun guys were talking about on one of their podcasts. I don't, I have no idea what episode this was. Yeah. I don't, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but I do listen to theirs because I like their site. And uh, they were saying, I don't think any of them were actually really into Civ 4 or Civ in general. They were all saying hmm. they were they couldn't really get into the series. And one of the reasons they were, they one of them cited was that, and they, and I don't remember who it was, but they all agreed anyway. Was that, um, you you don't really have a sense when you're playing the different civilizations that you're actually acting as that particular civilization. There isn't really a sense of of you know when I choose this the Spanish civilization I don't really feel like the king of Spain particularly right. and I and I agree with them and I and that's the way that like Empire Total War might, exactly that was exactly yeah. what they're comparing it to ah, right um, they were more generally comparing it to kind of the see what the I think is interesting American about style that, of RTS versus well, the or turn based or whatever yeah. versus the European style yeah but hold on really quickly let me explain your rebuttal that I'm going to create in my mind <laughs> um, is that. The thing you describe is probably actually much closer to what it is like to be the king of Spain right. than to be Spain, Spain, yes. super Spain, yeah, Spanish right. man. Like yeah. in reality, the way you real got the nations, now and, right? Exactly, yeah, they trained the armada. That stuff only comes yeah. out in his in historical sort of uh, hindsight, mm -hmm. just as it would yep. in Civilization right. Four. Yeah, it's just you're, that this is exactly what I was going to say. So yeah. exactly. your actual it's, king instead of wish fulfillment king. Basically? Exactly. Right. Well, yeah. your, your yeah. actual king instead of historically filtered king, where they okay, they yeah. they melt everything down into the most interesting elements and then describe an entire civilization that way whereas in reality like year by even in recent memory you know it's like um jake i was talking to you about about the difference between the san francisco depicted in the film milk versus the san francisco depicted in the film uh uh um, the rock <laughs> zodiac the zodiac um yeah. those movies are set very close to one another historically and they both depict very iconic San Francisco's, mm -hmm. but they're also very different San Francisco's. And and it and they're both excellent, excellent films. And living in San Francisco, it was really cool. And they're both, I mean, probably a accurate exactly. representations yeah, of that right. slice. Yeah, and yeah. Exactly. And it's interesting because it really goes to show how much history is in the telling. I mean, it really, you know, I mean, for for a lot of people, for, for someone living in San Francisco during that time period, it could have been either like a, you, uh, 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 the battleground of sort of the, an explosive gay rights movement. It could have been the summer of free love. It could have been this place where you, where this crazy serial, I mean, these were not all happening simultaneously, right, but literally, yeah. also but I mean, it, what it really was is all of those things. Probably. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what it also really was, was people just living a normal life right. and yes. not yeah. feeling dominated by any of those things as much as they were aware of them or engaged in them to greater or lesser extents. But San Francisco was none of those things to the extreme. And I mean, San Francisco is a city that is frequently pegged as being extreme in one direction or the other, but like anywhere else, well, not like anywhere else, like most places, when you live there, it's just a place for the most part. Right. And that's what's interesting about what you say about Civilization Four is that 
when you approach it with the with the angle that you have seemed to sort of are now like immersing yourself in uh it's probably actually a lot closer to yeah. to replicating history in a in a in a really interesting way but what's cool though is that it still does allow you to look back and see what those trends were it's just they're not right it's in a different order and exactly and right different circumstances and maybe things that happen in different countries yeah. at different times are happening it to you allows in, you to separate this... that sort of exactly. layer of history from exactly what you, you have in your mind as yeah um i mean I, I like that concept of a seed of of uh, sort of like a, almost when you think about it like in a, in a sort of like a chaos theory sort of right. way where it just well, you, you know, like yeah. you have several different factors, and then right. things could spiral out this way. Or I mean, that's what that I mean. That's what like, depends on. We got dodged in here, and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what a situation. <laughs> that that is a lot of what cares on your skin. Yeah. A lot of what game theory, like the sort of non-video game specific game theory, is about is that yeah. you know, like that that kind of systems and and things coming out of systems, and that's actually an area of of game design that that is hugely important when you're especially when you're talking about games that yeah. when you when you as you say like games as opposed to you know what I was calling like an interactive narrative or something. You know, but a game where where the rules are the same for all the players involved. Yeah. Whereas in a Call of Duty or something, the rules the computer is playing by are completely different than the one you're, ones you're playing by. Um, but when you're playing with in a game where it's the same from any from any player's perspective, some really amazing things can emerge in ways that they can't when you're playing with a less sort of equal system. Yeah, and uh, it's really interesting. And it's actually it's funny. I was going to bring this up last week and I forgot. Um, it's an area of game design that is that is pretty much on the decline. I mean, the idea of that kind of endless system-based game. I mean, we're definitely moving much, much, much towards games with beginnings and ends. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's for. I mean, we've been moving in that direction for a long, long time, and it's almost. I mean, it's on the PC platform. It's quite apparent because the PC platform used to be the one that was much more about kind of systems, mm -hmm. like sort of just yeah. systems above all else, and it still is. It's just that that's a smaller area than it yeah. than it was before. Um, but it's an interesting area of game design, and I think it's probably harder to sell to people and harder to explain. Well, but it's sure. really How amazing. How would you show a trailer of what no we were just exactly. talking about? But no one likes chess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suspect, probably, relatively speaking, very few people do like chess. I mean, I, don't, I do. I didn't know everyone, if you were being sarcastic like, or not. No, but, no one likes chess, and everyone likes action movies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> says, says official old man of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Kids but, today. Yeah. <laughs> but I can speak personally, you know, it is it is sometimes intimidating to approach stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's, yeah, no, it's, sure. it's something like Civilization 4 is is intimidating to approach. And it's unfortunate because it means those that it, it does make it hard to get people to try stuff like that. But yeah. but it's true that once you actually get in, like you can have amazing experiences that are just totally unlike something that's been essentially plotted out for you. It's yeah. just you have to be willing to. It does seem like put a lot, of, with it for a lot a of the you know games that yeah are like that. And I hate to bring it up again, but Far Cry Two <laughs> right. do have that barrier where right. it sort of sorts out who's willing yeah, to go Far, that far. Yeah, exactly. You Far know? Cry I mean, Two obviously always... isn't completely in that direction. No, it's a lot it's, closer but, to it than most shooters are. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. in that instance, it's 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 yeah in the same vein. Or like but... trying. <laughs> True, trying. Yeah, yeah you know, trying. I was talking about trying. trying. Yeah, trying. it's a really good game. Yeah, trying, trying. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing I want to say before we wrap this up sure. is about trying. I, I've actually never. I hadn't played the game uh, with the Beyond the Sword expansion. I've heard that's amazing. It actually is. It it's it, it's quite good. I mean, it. What it, is the Beyond the Sword expansion? Well, it's just you know. I mean, it does what other Civ expansions do. It adds you know a couple of different systems and more civilizations and things like that. But um, it it does more than than a typical expansion would. I mean, it's certainly far better than the Warlords. And so, I, if you haven't played Civ in a while and you want to revisit it, I would really recommend picking that up because it's uh, it made a huge difference. It's really good. Yeah, I've only heard good things about it. Yeah, um, cool. All right, Although well, it changed the music somewhat, and I don't like that. Yeah, so that's too bad. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to quickly address King's Bounty less at less length than I was originally going to because you said a bunch of stuff <laughs> that was really interesting and more interesting than what I'm going to say about this. Uh, <laughs> King's Bounty is. <laughs> definitely one of those games where you just keep playing it purely because it gets its hooks into you yeah and you're just like fuck yeah king's bounty gonna run around <laughs> and kill a bunch of guys with my army and like it's complete it's not no interesting historical parallels are revealed by this mm -hmm. game but you're a king um, <laughs> but it totally no, no, simulates not. being a oh no no <laughs> You get missions from the king. Ah, it's about like you get a bounty from the king. Oh, for, and you get the king's bounty. Right. 
Oh shit! It's actually not very much about that. The original game was actually more like more about the king, technically the king's bounty, than this one is. But it doesn't really have any impact on the game at all. Um, Fuck this! Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what they've done. Yeah. Um, but no, this game. Uh, I God, I feel so inadequate talking about it compared to all your Civ Four stuff. But uh, I, know, Nick just, yeah. it's, I knew yeah, your mind. And I know. Like, anyway, King's. Bounty. Anyway, I've been playing this way less substantial game. Um, but it's <laughs> you're, you're a waste. Yeah, but it's it's it is really 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 fun. I mean, it's the first game I've played in a while that has just sort of consumed me. Mm-hmm. Where when I'm at work, yeah. I'm just like, oh god, I can't wait to get home and just play King's Bounty. It's really sad, but it's true. Uh, and <laughs> it's just one of those games where it's so long that you can do that. You know, it's not like trying where where I, I definitely like trying like trying exactly. You know, mm-hmm. where I'm like, I can't wait to play more of that. But then you know, I do, and then it's over. Um, this game is fucking huge. It's enormous. And I don't know how it exists. I mean, it's a Russian game and, and, um, I'm really fascinated by the, the Russian design approach mm-hmm. and I think it's really cool. And they do a lot of things that people in, in the others in the Western world frequently don't kind of have the balls to do, I think. But this game is not so much like that. I mean, it's based on a Western design, obviously the Heroes of Mind Magic King's Bounty thing. Um, and it's also just amazingly polished in a way that not that many Russian games are not to, not to dump on the Russians because I, I I love the the attitude they take with their development a lot of the time, but it's just surprisingly polished and surprisingly solid and and for considering how huge it is, it's amazingly well put together and coherent and consistently enjoyable. I mean, you you it's you know I, I forget how much I talked about it last week, but there's basically roaming battles on an overworld, yeah, um, and you go from continent to continent, pick up quests, and you constantly are juggling like. 10 different quests across all these continents. It's but, sort of more avatar based than I sort of uh, assumed. You know what right. I mean? Like you, you have that just one character and you're just sort of. Right. But then you, but, but then when but you, you get never into a actually battle, fight with into, that character, yeah. he's just your general right. yeah. that you yeah. go into little turn based battles on a hex grid. Right. Um, and it's just, it's really, really, really fun. And you're constantly leveling up and you're constantly recruiting better guys for your army and learning uh, new, new, techniques and skills and things you can use in the battles and it's it's one of those games where there's never ever ever a good place to stop playing that's a big part of why it's consumed me so much since you always have like a dozen different quests they're always overlapping with each other you know you, yeah, you never yeah, get yeah. to the point where you're done with all the quests on your docket for now you you could probably theoretically actually play that way but it i've never bothered trying i mean it just seems pointless the way i play is just i do whatever quests are immediately on the you know whatever continent I'm on at the at the moment, and there are always more that you could be doing somewhere else. So there's never a clean break. You're always getting more quests that overlap with others, and it just makes. So it's not me... like World of Warcraft when it's shipped. Then <laughs> I don't remember. Well, it's it's it, there were like all these huge gaps where you ran out. Oh of things no, and it's had to not go. like that at all. I've yeah, never had. I've just, ne- yeah, yeah, I've never ever not had at least half a dozen quests simultaneously yeah. in this game. And there are some that I've just never bothered doing because I'm way past the level where the amount of experience I'd get for it is worth doing it because they were intended for you know level one to one or two guys but uh it's just it's ridiculous i I, it's i wish more people knew about it i feel like this game is getting getting harmed simply because people don't know about it it's not because it's not accessible or not approachable or not really polished there's nothing none of those elements are are weak i mean it's it's just incredibly strong and i think people just don't know it exists um i didn't know it existed either yeah so you can get it on Steam. I think it's only thirty bucks. And for, I mean, if you're if you're someone who actually, you know, who who cares how many hours you're getting for your dollar, I mean, Jesus Christ, this this has got to be one of the best deals you can get on Steam right now, or anywhere else for that matter. I mean, it's I I put it like sixty hours into this game, and it still doesn't feel like I'm wrapping it up at all. I mean, it's and it's been like sixty real hours. Uh, are these quests like generated, or are they? I mean, wouldn't that be an amazing surprise? Just kidding. The game goes yeah, on forever. No, no. <laughs> yeah. That's what's amazing about it because the enemies never respawn ever. So I've been playing 60 hours killing completely separately placed enemies. It's all randomly generated at the beginning, like a Civ game. Okay. Like when you say new game, uh, then it seeds the entire world. But after that, never. After okay, that, so there is that finite so number okay. of enemies and quests right. created at the exactly. beginning. Okay. And you have to right. eliminate them all. And actually that leads to a funny, a funny property of this game. Some areas have a higher purport have a much higher proportion of hostile NPCs than friendly NPCs. For example, there's a pirate continent, like a two part continent Sweet. that is full of pretty much purely hostile or potentially hostile NPCs who you can choose to attack. 
Um, there are very, 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 very few purely friendly NPCs. And so it basically means like I'm just marching around this entire enormous country, this like pirate <laughs> killing federation, everyone. killing everybody. And it's like you sort of the king demands it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird. It, like at this point, when you go just to like my scribbling names on the bounty, just adding. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> just right. You're Shock on the list. <laughs> yeah, I'm running up a high tab with my king here. Yeah, uh, there's like. The Isle of Freedom is the Islands of Freedom is what this area is called. And I'm just, <laughs> I am like a fucking genocidal maniac. I'm just marching around this. So maybe this the does Islands raise deep freedom. questions like Nick yeah, yeah, I know. Like after all, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's like a ghost country at this point. Like I'd say, like, one of the <laughs> I'm ways the you last hire, person of yeah. Freedom Island. You can, you can <laughs> hire die. out. Sorry, <laughs> I'm working for the king. Kiss, sorry, buddy. Uh, you can hire out a boat to get around if you want, and just and just drive. You essentially and just drive it around. And then you kill the boatman as the last person. <laughs> well, there's like other boats running around, and you can just run into them and choose to like pay them or just kill them too. And like you can just kill everyone. I mean, in this in this area anyway, you can kill absolutely everyone. And it's funny because I don't know who, you know, most of the time there's some pre in the quest. There's some pretense of. You know, oh well, these people are terrorizing or whatever, right. and you've got the, the but it's like, of whatever. In the pirate yeah. area, it's just a bunch of pirates who have sort of agreed to all live in this sort of confederation of like smaller islands, and it's like I'm not making this better for anyone. There's no one left here. Right. I'm just creating a Actually, barren, all the empty pirates have <laughs> left the rest of civilization to live by themselves. <laughs> right, in this they're like the pilgrims, area. basically. Not bother other they're, people, they're just, yeah, because you never, you never like... see pirates elsewhere in the game. They're only in their pirate land. And so I'm just marching through. We wanted through. to live in peace. <laughs> right. We finally, like, decided that we could just, uh, you know, keep to ourselves. You must die. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. And in fact, I still don't really know why I'm killing some of the other guys elsewhere because, you know, a lot of times I don't bother reading all the quest texts. It's not the kind of game where you feel like you need to read all the quest texts. It's not you all. could be maintaining and, uh, uh, the KB wiki. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll just I'll walk out. Like, there's hostile... Like, I'll be in the elf area, and, you know, I'll march outside the elf capital, and there's elves that I just kill. And it's like, uh, <laughs> these guys are hostile, so I'm going to kill them. Um, is that, am I supposed to be doing that? They're I just mean, taking a walk. Clearly I am. <laughs> like, the game intends for you to kill them, but I'm not sure in the fiction what that means. Like, on the one hand, I'm doing quests for the guy who rules this country. On the other hand, I'm marching around killing his citizens. And he doesn't seem to mind. He never brings it up. It's just, it's weird. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. But all that said, the game is amazingly fun and well made, and I would highly recommend it. Sweet. Cool. And that's trying. That's trying for you. Yeah. Should we do some reader mail? Yeah, we should read some oh. reader mail. Also, oh. two quick things. One, Brain Pipe is now on Steam. That's a game that I may have talked about ages ago. Um, it, was an IG, it was in the Independent Games Festival. It was a finalist. It's actually made by a few guys, a couple of whom actually work at Valve. So I think there might have been weird tension between them releasing commercial games, but they must have gotten it sorted out because it's on Steam now. I would recommend it. I think there's a demo available somewhere. Not on Steam, but somewhere else. Brain pipe. Brain pipe. It's a weird tunnel. I don't know how to describe it. You're theoretically in a brain pipe. Now, it's like res-like, except more just dodging things, less about combat. Anyway, it's really mm. cool. Um, so there's that. And then I wanted to mention I've forgotten Call of Juarez. Anyone who's listening who makes PC games, I'm sure we have at least a couple of developers listening to this. If you're making a PC game, fucking play Call of Juarez and see what it does with some of the menu stuff where you can actually oh. just use the the want the WASD keys to to answer binary choices and stuff. This is something I've been wishing PC games would do for years and years and years, and no one ever does it. If your hands are already always on those keys, why would you make someone move over to the mouse and then press yes or no, or yeah. move over to the arrow keys or something? Don't or enter, which is not close to anything. It is a really good using. point, given that you like on on a console you are you always have a thumb on A and B. Exactly. And a and yeah. B is yes and no. And right. on a PC you might just only have a hand on WAS. Exactly. If that's so, what your control scheme is. Yeah. Right. It I've never like, thought of that until I saw the call, call of Juarez. Yeah. Until I heard the call of war. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I'm someone who, for some reason, I'm really irritated when, like, Windows or any software really makes me constantly move my hand configuration around. Like, move from mouse to keyboard here, then keyboard to mouse here, or a different part of the. It seems ridiculous. It seems like a very basic element of user interface that you should minimize that as much as possible. So I was really impressed when the first thing I had to choose in Call of War as was between two characters, and it was with uh, W and D. Mm. Brilliant. Fucking do that, and then just make. Or no, is with A and D, and then just make W confirm and S deny or whatever. I mean, it's where your fingers are. So fucking please do that. Thank you. Um, thanks, Techland. Anyway, reader mail. 
Yes. It's, we have a ton of mail, so I'm yeah. sorry if we don't get to you this Mail week. from you, the readers. From you, the readers. Um, to us, the idle thumbs. Yep. Let's That's see. what we're collectively called, I think. We're the idle thumbs. I think so. People that... frequently address us as that. Really? Yeah. You're one of the idle thumbs? Sorry. Well, they generally they often say, hey, their thumbs, or hey, 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 idle thumbs. Oh, but like referring to the three of us collectively as the idle thumbs, like a shitty band or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, God, this might be too long. Oh, this is another one of those we're reading a transcript. Scripted, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, entire, this entire reader mail <laughs> section was sent in. Well, um, Lenny uh, Alanis wrote in to to talk about sort of what he sees as as a resurgence in RTS games um, after kind of going through a period of stagnation, which I which I agree with, but I also feel like that's kind of a big topic that maybe we should wait till we haven't mm. done such a long episode to start talking about. Um, also, by the way, I don't know. I hope this guy doesn't mind me mentioning this. This guy also sent a separate email um, about how he was one of the guys who played that old uh, Chapter Honor Warhammer 40k Quake mod back in the day. And uh, I actually remember he, he, he included his screen name, which I actually remember seeing. So that's pretty rad because that was 10 years ago or more. Um, well, definitely more. Um, so that was crazy. Good old internet. It's a weird thing. Um, it's been around for a while at this point, which is weird. I know. Uh, oh, I sent myself an email to remind us to to remind me to update everyone about the status of my crazy Luminous game that I mentioned last week. I think last week I was at when I on the podcast I had hit about three hours and a couple million point or six hours yeah. and a couple million. Points. By the time I I got to nine hours fifty nine minutes and fifty nine seconds, at which point I had accrued nine point one million points in Luminous. And then there must be some kind of hard 10 hour limit or something because the game, it, my game ended at that point and I hadn't actually lost. So, yeah, I don't it's know. It's like a Y2K coding. <laughs> right. Somewhere. Maybe just yeah. the, when they were doing it's the, the UI for the switch. timer, once it had to get to a second digit in the hours, things like, no, fuck it. Yeah. yeah. I ran actually, out of space. It's true. I actually was wondering because it didn't look like there was enough room in the UI for a two digit number. Um, Hopefully that's the real reason because that, <laughs> I know. that's such a stupid reason. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It is. <laughs> But anyway, I'm gl- I'm so glad it happened because I couldn't bring myself to quit and I wasn't playing any other games. And 9.1 million points in Luminous? Jesus fucking Christ. So anyway, that happened. Um, God, I'm sorry if I don't read anyone's email because I'm just not going to have time. Uh, so just read one of them. Santu Maki, I'm not pronouncing that right. It's got accents in it. Uh, writes, hey, I just discovered this podcast and I'm liking what I'm hearing. Good job. Thanks, guy. So he says, I was listening to episode 29 and 30 when you're talking about The Last Express, which I missed back in the day due to some unfavorable, unfavorable reviews that got here in Finland. And I had this nagging feeling that it reminded me of some new game. Then it hit me, Heavy Rain. From what you guys have said about The Last Express and from what I've read or seen about Heavy Rain, they seem to have a lot in common about the way the story unfolds, how the games are concentrated in rather small environments. Am I completely off base or what do you think? Take care. Keep up the good work. Uh, Santu. Nick? I can't speak to Heavy Rain. I have not really I played, it, played it or seen it or... Did I talk about it on the podcast before? I I think we talked about it a little bit. I think we talked about it after E3 just a bit. Heavy Rain gives the impression of being way more about you sort of starting, I guess, like at the base of a tree and sort of working your way out to a very particular... You know, I mean, it just it seems like it's more about you bouncing from node to node along what is not necessarily a linear path, but definitely moves from left to right, whereas The Last Express... There is, it's almost like there's just sort of a wide channel of information running and you just have to pick what parts of it you see. Mm. Right. Kind That's of. true, yeah. I mean, in, in The Last Express, you're essentially proceeding along a fixed timeline, but there are many things simultaneously occurring along that timeline. Whereas, uh, and so it's it's an odd, it's sort of like a wide river, whereas uh, yeah. whereas last, whereas last um, Heavy Rain is more of like a lot of little offshoots yeah, of the river. Yeah. yeah. There's my cool metaphor. Um, yeah, I think if anything, Heavy Rain is... From a gameplay perspective, is probably closest actually to to the previous game, which was um, Fahrenheit or Indigo Prophecy. It definitely feels like an updated version of that for sure. Still got a lot of quick time combat. And I mean, both both the what is it, Quantic Dream, those Quantic and, Dream, yeah, and uh, Last Express seem to have some similar goals in terms of just right. We want to move adventure game storytelling forward by introducing right story that can sort of move around based on what right. you do, but. The Last Express and the the Quantic Dream games seem to go about it in actually fairly different ways. Right, but but it's true that they are shooting. Yeah, it's true though that they are shooting for sort of a similar end goal, sort of, or at least a similar end feeling, and Just uh, a higher agency. Right, narrative. Exactly. Basically. Mm-hmm. I was actually surprised by how 
constrained I felt playing Heavy Rain, to be honest, more so than Last Express. It felt like you could almost feel yourself being shepherd. Like, no matter what you chose, you could the sort of feel Express, yourself you still going. You just sit on the train, train and the world just flows <laughs> right. by and you lose. Yeah, exactly, basically. which is awesome, I think. Yeah, um, yeah that's great. Because it's, it's made in such a way that you can rewind and yeah. it doesn't feel, it's not annoying. I haven't seen a whole lot of Heavy Rain, but from what I have seen, it is always just like, do something now, do something now, because actually the world is probably not moving unless you're actually moving right, exactly. and pressing buttons. Whereas right. the Last Express, right. oh, you want to just sit in the dining car on a train? Right. You can. You right. won't. You can you'll, just you'll listen be to these people the having their conversation. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm curious about Heavy Rain, but I'm, I'm hedging my bets. I'm sort of intrigued by what I played at E3, but it's, I'm hoping it's not just a sort of fancy coding on the exact on the exact same thing but it's um, a three-hour fight in a junkyard weirdly right <laughs> uh yeah it was when i played it god i sucked at that quick time stuff i don't like that 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 is what that game is the combat is big i don't like quick time stuff I, well i don't dislike it entirely but i don't like how heavily it's used in some games anyway um richard uh piotrowski writes his subject is apps and governors Hey, Idle Thumbs. Naturally, I think the podcast is great. Keep it up. Two things. One, is it <laughs> is it just me or does Merrick Bronstring really sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger? You should <laughs> definitely get him to say I'm the governor. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Uh, Merrick, please send in a wave of yourself saying I'm the governor. I'm the governor. I'm the governor. Stop it. Which of those was Merrick and which was Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Two, have you guys ever thought of releasing an iPhone app, either a game or some way of alerting people that there's a new podcast out? If done right, it could be awesome. Many baboo bird noises, Richard Peterson. I don't know if the App Store actually lets you put up an app that's nothing but here's when my podcast comes out. Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe they totally do. There's certainly do. a lot of stuff that's less useful than that on the yeah. App Store. Jesus. Um, you just called it the Game Store. Did I say that? Yeah, I think you did. Uh, well, whatever kind of store it is, there's stuff that's bullshit. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Nels Anderson writes in about the permanent death thing. Um, it was started by Ben Abraham, and then uh, Nels and, and another guy joined in. Um and another guy. So there are three people doing it. There, there was. It's been sort of a hilarious bandwagon thing. Um, he he writes. I actually found the experience to be quite interesting and affecting. Given the well-deserved Far Cry Two affection on the parts of thumbs, or at least some subset of it, I thought y'all might be interested. Cheers, Nels. So yeah, that's very cool. I'll link to that stuff. Yeah. Um, Joe writes Shinji Mikami. After hearing you guys praise Mikami on episode 32, just wanted to hear what you guys thought of Piano Three. It's another niche title from him, but was surprisingly good. You should check it out if you haven't already. Uh, I, I remember I didn't play that game. Yeah, I remember no. being really interested in it, and then the reviews were pretty mixed to sort of middling. And I said, "Oh, well, maybe I don't need to play that, but yeah, maybe it's worth looking at." Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry, we can't answer that in a better yeah, way. Sorry that yeah. We're down. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Justin Richardson writes, Hey, Chris, Jake, Nick, I have a short and embarrassing story to share with you guys. Every day at work, I sit in front of the computer and do what any clear thinking individual, individual should do. Listen to Idle Thumbs podcast. I send little emails from my work address to my personal account at home so I can check it later. Reminders and things that made me laugh, etc. So I listened to episode 31 and I was crack cracking up in my cubicle. I typed up a quick email to my Gmail account, which read exactly as follows. No subject. Slob shooter. Gamer grub feed bag. Strategy chocolates. That was it. Unfortunately, I hit the wrong button and also inadvertently sent it to an entirely separate work department from my own. I can just, <laughs> I can just imagine I can just imagine these people looking at the words in this email and saying, what the fuck? Thanks, guys. <laughs> P.S. Keep doing what you do. You guys are the best. A new Idle Thumbs fan, Justin R. Thanks, guy. Yeah. And then his email ends on an interesting philosophical note. His signature reads, every man is guilty of all the good he didn't do. Henry David Thoreau. So I think we should all... Take a moment and reflect on that. <laughs> Reminds me how good trying is. Yeah, I agree. Trying. 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 Kill him. <laughs> um, Didn't we get some dream emails, actually? Oh, yeah, we did. I'll get, I'll get to this. Oh, yeah, here it is. Wow, coincidence. Ahoy. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Wes Martin... I like that people keep sending us video game dreams. I would like to now officially solicit video game dreams to questions at idlethumbs.net. Yep. Here on out, I am soliciting video game dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my, what, my FD, is that FDR? I don't know. It's just, or is that JFK? Yeah, it's yeah. a, a three-letter acronym president. Yeah, it definitely is one of those guys. I love the three-letter acronym presidents, by the way. Like, I love that, that it's, so, it's such a ubiquitous thing yeah. that, that newspapers can, can just reference FDR or JFK. I think that's actually pretty rad. Yeah. Um, anyway, dreams. Always makes TR sound Send us your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> TR, yeah. <laughs> he's missing it. Yeah. Just kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, do send us streams. And I, you know, <laughs> preferably real ones. I don't know. I think it would might get stupid if people start just making them up. Yeah, please just only send us one if them, you have a dream yeah. to questions at idlethumbs.net. Right. Also send your regular reader mail to questions at <laughs> right. idlethumbs.net. Exactly. Um, this guy... Uh, dreams his dream is i had this dream when i was seven years old it was so terrifying i still remember it i was at my elementary school just sitting around at recess suddenly everyone's voices are replaced with text bubbles and it makes that blip sound that occurs during the briefing to bad dudes (laughs) everybody's head rotates to look at me even for people who weren't facing me their heads spun around and they all yelled in unison are you a bad enough dude (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the school bully then approaches me and proceeds to beat the crap out of me with charged up punches. <laughs> oh, man. I like that they're charged up punches. Yeah. It was horrible. I was getting ready to die. Oh, man. This is this is great. I was getting ready to die when a 10-foot tall Ronald Reagan descended from the clouds. <laughs> he destroyed the bully with Dragon Ball-esque fighting moves and then turned to me and said, let's go get a burger. <laughs> I had been playing bad dudes for hours before I went to sleep. You know what's funny about that to me is that Bad Dudes is about are you bad enough to rescue the president? And then the president came in. But I'm pretty sure when that game was released, George Bush was the president. Am I wrong? Like, when did that game come out? I don't know. Yeah, did Bad Dudes come out 88 or earlier? I thought it was 88 or like 89 or something. Maybe in his mind, Reagan was still the president. I know. That that could be funny. I mean, you know, at that age, like, you don't give a shit who the president is. So, I mean. It's just the guy you've seen on TV. I I remember speaking of presidents. Also, I always imagine the president in Bad News to be Ronald Reagan for some reason. Oh, Oh, maybe. Or just sort of a weird sort of cartoon amalgam of presidents who looks sort of like the smiler from Transmetropolitan (laughs) or something. But uh, probably Reagan. Yeah. All right. So, that's a good dream. I I appreciate that. Um, What else do we have in here? What's our time? We're over, but just keep going. Glenn White writes, Hey, Thumbs, this goes back to the topic of games affecting real life. A few weeks back, I was fast asleep. Oh, this is a dream thing. Should we save this or should we just read it? No, let's just go with dreams. A few weeks back, I was fast asleep in my house when I was woken by screaming and then very loud crying. I was very, very scared. In my half-asleep state, I knew it was a witch, uh, presumably (laughs) from Left 4 Dead. Yeah. Uh, My girlfriend was woken up by the loud crying and went to turn on the light. I I grabbed her hand and said, That will startle her. And then <laughs> that's awesome. I then realized I do not live in Left for Dead. On actually waking up, it turned out it was a drunken girl crying outside of my house. Wow, that is fairly fucking creepy. So yeah, it actually yeah, was a real uh, thing. And like, that's um, the worst. For a while, I was very scared that witches. zombies were real. Keep on blasting pods, Glenn. P.S. Right, left, more men. Oh man, <laughs> there's two Merrick Bronstering references in Reader Mail this week. Yes, wow. extreme. Right, left. Um, I I really like this dream. That's a really good one. Um, Icebox? No? Oh, yeah, we have an Icebox email. Um, yeah, from Icebox's Tech Corner. Yep, you may remember. God, we have so I'm skipping so much email. There's way too much email this week. Uh, keep sending it, though. We're sorry that we hate your email and don't read it. Yeah, we, we just don't have time. Um, we assure you that we read every mail. We do. I We do read every mail. Yeah. Or at least I do. I think Jake I do. does, too, yeah. Um, I hate all your mail. <laughs> Especially you, Icebox. <laughs> oh, man. What wow. the fuck? <laughs> burn. Nick Arbitrage. I'm burn. kidding. I, I just... All right. So Griff Icebox Rousseau writes. Oh, man. He starts his email with Griff Icebox Rousseau writes. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't even man, realize that when I said it. Uh, I am horrible. Anyway, Griff Icebox Rousseau writes. Yes. Hello, Idle Thumbs. Icebox here with a question squarely aimed at Jake Rodkin. Shit. Oh, man. Here I we go. I forgot that's what this email actually was. I just remembered that Icebox sent us something. Uh, ever since I was young, I wanted to in some way aid in the creation of adventure games. After playing the likes of Curse of Monkey Island and Myst, not to mention more recent endeavors like Samurai 2 and Telltale games, I've become infatuated with the notion of crafting this particular style of game. <laughs> Jake is freaking out. <laughs> games, stories, puzzles, and meaningful interaction. My question is this. What would you recommend for a ground-level student with no idea where to study or what to apply for this kind of development? What subjects and classes should I try? Obviously, it's too early to tell, but should I try to achieve a position at a studio like Autumn Moon or Telltale? Start my own indie studio? How would I go about it what i'm hearing is that a lot of industry journalists are bailing on the pointless new games criticism wow kieran gillen just got fucking burned right there yeah didn't even get the name right and instead going on to actually design games is it reasonable for me to dive into journalism and hoping to eventually accumulate the skills necessary not, not for development like that I have, i'm sorry to... <laughs> or do i need a rigorous background in something like architecture or computer science to even think about designing for the industry i keep i look forward to hearing your thoughts keep casting and blasting icebox griff so jake what do you Man. as an accomplished adventure game professional what do you say <laughs> Oh, that email made me extremely uncomfortable because my answer to that is, I have no idea. (laughs) Um, Actually, well, I will say, uh, 
the pointless endeavor of games journalism is actually what got me my job at Telltale Games. Hey! Uh, I... Whereas I know absolutely nothing about having a formal education and leading to games because I didn't really do any of that. So, yeah. um... I, I will say that a lot of game companies require you to have a college education, but don't, or at least strongly encourage it, but don't specify what it's in. Yep. It's frequently the case. Like, mm. a lot of times they'll say bachelor degree, yeah. like, required or strongly recommended, but they won't. Also, the strength of your portfolio can end up yeah. sort of overtaking that, if yeah. it's depending on the position that it is. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, college education, a good thing to have. <laughs> yeah, hey. That's all talent. But, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> uh, it, it totally, I think, depends on the position. Uh, in my case, I really did just sort of in my free time, did a lot of graphic design work, did a lot of uh, just sort of screwing around with free game projects and stuff, and then ended up also writing for a couple game sites on the side. And that, that <laughs> water has started dripping from the ceiling. Yeah. But uh, all, of, all of those things sort of combine into me having a sort of passable, I guess, sort of passable portfolio of of sort of web and UI stuff that I had just done as a hobbyist, plus writing for games on the internet, uh, writing for games, writing about games on the internet meant that I ended up just sort of through press events and E3 the and emailing with and developers. Stuff. I just yeah. I knew people, so um, it's an in, but you have to have talent as yeah, well, right? I mean, I, you, or you at least you have applicable, to, you, you know, you have skills. to you have to have a skill that would get you hired yeah. at a game company, but. Um, I, I didn't write about games with the like express purpose of getting a job at a game company. I right. mean, that sort of became an apparent side effect later when I, I mean, as just a hobbyist journalist, like, well, I know these people, but I, I wrote about games on the internet because I really like writing about games on the internet. Uh, and then in the case of Telltale, I had written a lot about LucasArts and adventure games related stuff. And when those guys were starting the company, they called me up uh, the E3 right like a month after they started and said, we wanted to talk to you about your thoughts on adventure games and stuff. And then I was like, Oh man, <laughs> these guys would maybe totally hire me once they have an office. And then they did. Yeah. So I'm a sort of freakish, unfortunate special case. So I'm, I just told my life story instead of answering your email. Um, basically my, my stupid advice as the dad of this podcast apparently is just do, <laughs> do what you like and get good at it and then figure out how you can use that to work in a job in the games industry. If yeah. you, if you sort of try to hone your skills around how you're going to land a sweet job because you are checking things off of a list, you will be a sad person. Yeah, you'll, you'll be a pretty miserable journalist if, that, if you go oh, in. You'll, you'll, probably, you'll probably not enjoy being a journalist and suck yeah. at it. And also, it may actually be to your detriment at that point. And you'll be sad yeah. that you don't have a job in games. But just surely if, if you like games and want to make games, there's something that you can do well, whether it's uh writing about them or being a guy who schedules shit or testing a game or drawing a picture or learning how to program i mean there's a lot of stuff you can do that's that doesn't mean anything it's worthless what i'm saying everything is worthless <laughs> yeah well and saying that saying that i mean just there wasn't a specific path is true for a lot of game developers yeah i mean yeah. at this point there are obviously this is a conversation that's probably been had a million times in the world chris is looking at the clock and he's going to freak out <laughs> Uh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Video games. It's fucking video games. <laughs> it's true. That's what it is. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I guess you can get a degree, a degree in making a video game at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like it, being people who I, people who I know who are game designers have come up from QA to production to game design have come in straight out of uh, at game design degrees or yeah. like film There's school no or hobbyist or level design or even art so you know you don't need a degree in programming or architecture or any other tangential thing you just also if you're the sort of person who's predisposed to just make complete things yourself make a video game <laughs> yeah there you go yeah that's my goofy advice from a person who really doesn't know and just <laughs> looks around at what other people are doing that's so okay. that's how uh, that's how that works do something though. awkward long email yeah that's also, um, if you have an interest in becoming a games journalist, don't bag on games journalists in an email you send to a podcast <laughs> uh, hosted by two uh, professionally paid games journalists. Yeah. That's okay. I don't care. I don't know. Um, no one cares. Either. Also, that was Icebox's tech corner. That's true. Uh, so, um, God. Sorry. <laughs> that's that okay. was a horrible answer. 
I'm sorry. No, it's no, fine. That's fine. That's I thought it was fine. Uh, yeah. it was I mean, it was accurate answer. for for a lot of people. Um, yeah. Tom Bryan writes Bioshock Two. I just watched a thing on Bioshock Two, and out of nowhere, I thought, wait, isn't playing as a big daddy in the next Bioshock a bit like playing as Pyramid Head in the next Silent Hill? That's kind of dumb. I like your bod blast. It's funny sometimes. Tom Bryan, Manchester, England. I like that he included where he lives, like a newspaper letter to the editor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, sort of. It's like it's like playing against the well. If you're playing against the big daddy from like the first third of Bioshock, maybe it's like that. By the end of Bioshock, though, taking out big daddies ends up being a hilarious like. For me, it was like a hilarious seven second affair where it's like you're fucked. I've just set up like eighteen fucking traps and like you know I've got forty bomb grenade things and I'm gonna launch onto your face as soon as you walk into this room. So big daddies turned into ridiculous cannon fodder for me by the end of the game, which is not very pyramid head like, but mm-hmm. I can see where you're coming from. All right. Next. <laughs> yeah. uh, next is also Tom Bryan from Manchester, England, too. <laughs> this is a great email. No subject line. The full t- I don't know how to read this, but the full text of the email is <laughs> wizard, a reckless disregard for sorcery, <laughs> which is an amazing, an amazing uh, take yeah. on uh, a reckless disregard for gravity. Yeah. He did the uh, same capitalization treatment. But with the wizard from Trine. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, I still don't know how, how the company that, that, that Dejabon, the company that makes the Ah game, thinks people should talk about it. I, or, I, I wonder if they have a recommended. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they also wrote in, by the way. They listened to our podcast and they liked it. And they <laughs> glad we talked uh... about their game. Good. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks for making a cool game. Now that I made fun of the name of your game. <laughs> Well, I did that when I talked about it. That's true. The they first should time. release a sequel called Wizard. <laughs> we would fucking talk about that all day. Yeah. <laughs> that love... game would be made for us. Idle thumbs. We love Wizards and the Moon, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. What? And Far Cry Two. Yeah. Um, Mark Payne wants to know, what do you think about Hearts of Iron Three? <laughs> That's right, War. <laughs> Mark. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I like that he he. He really well, stuck with his typo and really you think? stood by it. Um, I think he just made a typo and then decided, fuck no, no, it, I'm no, going I said, said why do you think? I, no, I, I want to know your thoughts. I actually um, have to admit I'm completely unfamiliar with the Hearts of Iron series beyond knowing it exists and I'd probably be able to pick it out of a screenshot lineup. But beyond that, I haven't really played it. Nick? Uh, same. Ugh. Jake? <laughs> Jake? Jake definitely has not played these I'll games. I'll tell you where I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, we uh, think that maybe you should tell us why we should care about this game because yeah. we're all stupid apparently. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. He chose the one topic that that we can't just ramble on. For but he talked. He started hours. with war, which we could go off on for probably five hours. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> so, no, seriously. Um, Mike Felix. Oh, this is good. Mike Felix says, hey guys, before I go any further, I'd first like to apologize to Jake Rodkin. When I first wrote you guys about the mental images I had of all of you, I did so thinking it would be an entertaining, all in good fun email for you and the <laughs> listeners. However, in retrospect, it turned out to be a hilarious email which spawned a phenomenon which I can only describe as the big bird effect. Jake, the last thing I wanted was for your mental image to be dragged through the proverbial gutter for some cheap laughs at the expense of the self-confidence you have in your own mental image. For this, Jake, I'm sorry. I couldn't live with myself if I logged on to idlethumbs.com to be greeted by an article which described how Jake could no longer put up with the big bird effect an overdose on a deadly combination of painkiller, antidepressants, and peeps. No, Jake, too many idols have gone out this way, and we the people cannot afford to lose another in the same senseless manner. So from this point on, I would like to strike my first email from the public res- record. Stay strong, Jake. Uh, well, so. what he doesn't know is that I actually look like Big Bird, and I know people <laughs> People for like probably the last six months have been wondering what that, that noise is that we make at the end of the podcast. That's, that's actually just how I talk when yeah. I'm not podcasting. <laughs> so if you're wondering... Uh, you know, uh, we refer to it as the Babu internally, but yeah. that's actually... That's sort of your nickname That's sort of point. Jake Babu Big Bird is Big Bird uh, Rodkin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Great. So, yeah, if you're wondering, it's because I am Big Bird. Yeah. My voice, like the pitch of my voice is, is lowered so that you don't recognize. It's, I see. It's a sort of witness protection thing, but since <laughs> I usually sound like Big Bird, uh, it just comes out like normal guy. That's cool. It's, it's weird. So no, no harm, no foul. All right, he continues. I'd also, like to say, I'd also like to say that I recently bought Sam & Max for Xbox Live Arcade, and it's been taking time away from playing Infamous. It's a well-crafted and funny game, which I'm very late to the party on. I was shocked when I saw Jake Rodkin's name in the credits for one of the episodes as UI designer. Even though I heard he Jake say he worked for Telltale Games, I always thought he was lying. Keep up the great podcast. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, fuck you, buddy. No. <laughs> Man, this guy just had a Jake Rodkin <laughs> one-two punch here. I know. People keep doing that. What is this? Last, yes. Jake last is a goes, hilarious those, yeah. like, mailbag punching bag. Here's, yeah. Bag, bag, bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the mailbag punching bag bag. <laughs> yeah, last week there was another guy. I was like, here's the thing that's about Jake. This is vaguely complimentary. Also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Brian Sealer or Siler or something writes, um, please. Bri- Brian Cyborg, right? <laughs> Brian Cyborg. Please fix my mouth. Hey, guys. Thanks for the podcast. For what it's worth. <laughs> what? Guys, Why did he say, no, please fix my mouth? That's his subject line. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Cyborg writes, please fix my mouth. Please, please fix my mouth. Please conduct repairs ah, on my vocal units. <laughs> we like, love right. cyborgs and moons we, and uh, wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best. Also, dinosaurs. Yeah. Spacemen. <laughs> All right, so he says, hey, guys, thanks for the podcast. For what it's worth, you guys are my favorite talking on the internet dudes ever. Question, how in the chuffing hell do you make the little horn sound? By which I'm sure he means the baboo. Oh, he my means... Group of ga- <laughs> my group of gaming friends has taken up World of Warcraft, and there have been literally trillions of opportunities to use the horn in comic fashion. <laughs> wow, what? And every time what? I've tried, what? I've what? failed miserably. Possibly it could be these horrible, sexy lips I've got, but I prefer to hope that you guys can use your idle thumbs to do some impromptu speech therapy for me. Man. Do you press your lips together and make the sound fr- from through them, or are you honking with your lips out like a fish, or what? Thanks, the original really silo. It. It's sort of just comes naturally One, yeah, how that, are we gonna break this down well i think i think that's worth we're just gonna get into this now this is an email <laughs> yeah. specifically about the fucking baboo i know we so have to address it's it it's worth talking about that kind of we've talked we've talked about this how you know in arrested development everyone has the different versions of the chicken <laughs> yeah. sound yes, right. yes, there's yes, no yeah. actual correct way to make the baboo like right. it is there's a and <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's no there's no there's no specific way it's uh it's sort of a combination of a bird this sound is more or, simpson yeah. than, than the simpsons yeah. than anything really yeah. But anyway, so uh, there's no real wrong Jake's way. Jake's is the most trumpet-like. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. it's a trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the hell mine is. <laughs> yeah, and Nick's sort of got a little, like, hoo-hoo element to it. Sort <laughs> yeah, of wait, do yours again, Nick. <laughs> yeah. No, see, I'm not really it's doing okay, that. Like, no, that wasn't that See, wasn't I'm trying, I'm forcing Yeah, it. now that you're thinking about it, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, you got to just, just go with whatever it is. You got to let the baboo come. No, don't do it too much. Yeah, so we don't know. Also, why... I'm on stage now. We make that sound enough now that people are writing emails about it. Yeah, it's a little weird. Maybe it's time for a baboo moratorium. Uh-oh. So you've killed it now. Yeah, thanks, guy. You can just make your tr- trillion goddamn baboos in World of Warcraft. We, <laughs> won't, we won't be anymore. <laughs> what a weird... Yeah. Yeah. What are we talking about? I don't yeah, know. it might be time to end this podcast. We've yeah. got some other really good emails, but we oh. can't. I just don't have time. Um, cool. Well, thanks for sending in good stuff. Uh, great. <laughs> Video game. I often am like, okay, today's the 7th, so that means it's the 8th. And then <laughs> yeah. when I get to record, it's like, okay, so I'm saying the 8th, but it's probably that means it's the 9th. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that fucking yeah. sucks. It's July 8th, 2009. And this is Out of Thumbs 33. And I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. <laughs> 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 And I'm Jake Rodkin. <laughs> Are you we going with that? Yeah. All right. Alrighty. What, you don't want to? I don't care. It's hey, July guys. 8th, 2009. <laughs> and this oh. is Out of Thumbs 33. Really? And I'm Chris Remo. <laughs> and I'm Nick Brecken. <laughs> and I'm Jake Rodkin. I'm Rodgen. Jake, yeah. Oh, no. I thought oh, was... God. Anyway, hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no? All right, go again. <laughs>